Chapter 91, Six Days Later, Third Pav, in the New World sits an island with a rather distinct appearance. The size of the island was rather small but the giant skull erected out into the sky was the real knocker. This is the pirate island of Hashinosu, the future base of Blackbeard many decades later. A rather loud atmosphere resounded the island as constant violent booms and bangs went off. Blood stained the ground as it cracked in drought while the skies themselves were covered with black clouds. The men here were the absolute scum of the seas. They killed, massacred, pillaged, raped, robbed, ravaged and destroyed. They were the strongest and the worst men in the new world. Tens of thousands of them gathered all over Hashinosu. The main activities were the following. 1. Eat. 2. Drink. 3. Sleep. 4. Party. 5. Fight. 6. Kill. 7. Sex. 8. Massacre. If a normal human were to speak on this island they would immediately feel shell-shocked. Whether it was the reeking smell of death or the endless corpses lying about, it was truly a despairing sight. Dash. Muir de Bar. A small broken down bar sat near the core of the island. Hey, did you get the message? The big bosses are Kami. A pirate exclaimed as he drank some rum. That's right. I'm sorta, afraid. The man shook his head, you should be. I was there in the Angelic War and the Dawn War when Shiki Sama and Linlin Sama fought. They're monsters. What division are you guys in? The man asked. The one being asked unfurled a sheet of paper. Hum, I'm in Division 4. The man grumbled. You lucky idiot. You got to be in the Shaki Onisama division. Yaya yeah, yaya. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen her though. I heard she went to Sabayati Archipelago recently. He then asked, What about you? He took a quick sip of his drink. I'm in Division 2 with Shiki Sama. Thud. A green haired man joined the conversation. Hey boys, I got into Division 8. You know who's in charge of it. One replied with a nod. It's the new tragedy, Captain John. Dash. They then went on with some side talk after a loud commotion went off. Gasps and murmuring, Oh why why, what's happening? A nine foot tall woman asked. T they are returning, one by one, dash, the south coast of Hashinosu. A ginormous ship made of cake and other foods docked on. Hey, isn't that, I it is, ma ma ma'am ma, a towering woman with a curvaceous figure walked out from the ship. Long pink hair, beautiful face and voluptuous body. Another thirty or so shadows emerged of varying heights, though they all had rather young faces. A spectator's eyes widened, B bounty of 2.63 billion berries, the third division commander, the evil spirit, Charlotte Linlin. Dash, near the east coast, thud, asterisk, the ground cracked apart as a shadow landed from the sky. It was a man with golden hair and a cigar in his mouth, he stood nearly eight feet tall. J I H A H A H A H A. It's been a while since I've smelled this much blood. A man who was sleeping nearby awakened with fear as he muttered, the second division commander, Golden Lion, Shaki. His friend nearby nodded with fright, a bounty of over three billion berries. Dash, the north coast, a man was fishing in the sea as all his money was robbed by a higher up in his division. His name is Chiron, Binkasu no Sake wo, Tadok ni Yuku tilde, Yumikas Kimikase Namimikase tilde, Shio no. Chiron was singing away as he saw a large silhouette on the distant horizon. Hum, it was a giant ship followed by many, many more. One galleon with over twenty smaller ships. Thud, the ramps fell upon the beach one by one. Chiron was afraid to move, afraid to sing and afraid to breathe as the men walked off. Thousands of them appeared, talking, laughing, and joking around. Gulp, Chiron gulped as one giant. Ramp fell only forty meters in front of him. An equally tall man walked off. He had glorious blonde hair, a distinct mustache and a pirate hat. He carried a rather tall and beautiful glaive. Oi, brat, is Zebek back yet? The man asked with a deep voice as he eyes Chiron. The man talking was Edward Newgate, the first division commander of the Rocks Pirates. A bounty of 2,989,046,000 berries. A. N. His new look. Dash. Skull Rock. Slowly but surely the pirates began to gather here from all over the island. The word was out that all three titans had arrived. Whitebeard was making his way inside of the giant skull until he paused. His eyes narrowed as he looked up, to the very top of the skull. What's wrong, Newgate San? One of his division mates asked. Whitebeard used his hockey, someone out of the ordinary. Hmm, the golden lion and the evil sprit are not here so who could it be? The man asked once more. Gurarara, make some space, you all. He yelled out, and instantly, the flocks of pirates jumped back, clearing an open platform. 
A large circle around 400 meters wide was created with Whitebeard at the center. The pirates spectating looked up and saw the black shadow so incredibly far up as they heard a noise. V W O O O O O. The air was screaming, and the shadow, it was getting bigger. F W O O O O. The air howled once more as the shadow came closer and closer, cutting through the wind. Crash. Boom. The ground nearby started to break into cobweb-like patterns as the nearby town area was shaking from the impact. The cracks extending from the center of the circle all the way to the pirates standing almost half a kilometer away. The dust cleared. Gurarara. Whitebeard's distinct laughter resounded the area as the pirates identified the man. Black hair with red streaks, tall frame reaching higher than ten feet. A young man with a rather handsome face, though his blazing red eyes caused everyone watching to take a deep gulp. He had a regal attire donned with intrinsic patterns. T that is the sin incarnate. A pirate yelled out, thud. A drunk man instantly sobered up as he fell to the ground. Other whispers went off, the youngest to ever get a bounty surpassing the two billion mark. The one behind the West Blue Massacre and the Amethyst Kingdom Crisis. He's also the one who disarmed the Admiral Candidate Zephyr. The 5th Division Commander, Ina D. Damien. Ignoring all the noise, the two men at the center eyed one another. And instantly, silence prevailed. Nothing but deep breaths and loud gulps were heard as they waited. Alas, the silence ended. G U R A R A R A R A R A H A H A H A H A. Newgate Awesome, you grew a mustache now. Damien commented. The man chuckled, that's right, but I go by Whitebeard now. Whitebeard then narrowed his eyes with a large smirk, kid, you've grown a lot stronger now. You'll catch up to me soon. Damien hummed at the words as his eyes drifted elsewhere. Awesome, that weapon of yours. Whitebeard finished his words, this is Murakumogiri of the Seijo o Wazamano. These words brought many of the spectators to gasp in shock as well. The swordsmen mixed in the audience were especially solemn, their weapons buzzing in their hands. Dash, hee hee, you know, Asen. When I went to Wano Kuni, I met an old man who helped me forge a weapon, Damien slowly spoke up. Whitebeard squinted his eyes in curiosity, and since then, I have yet to clash blades with a worthy foe to truly test it out. With the words out, Damien extended his left hand to the left. Vwoo. The air started to corrode and quiver as some raging sword energy flooded around. A large, unique weapon materialized in the Sin Incarnate's hand. It had a beautifully designed wooden staff-like handle that was connected to a rustic sword body with a menacing skull. Which was then followed by two large crimson clawed blades that spiraled around each other as they exuded an eerie red mist. Gasp. The nearby men weren't ignorant of the feeling. The dread. They felt the same coming from Whitebeard's weapon, though it was far less conspicuous with its supremacy. Newgate's eyes widened as his mind clicked, it was you. The one who brought down the thirteenth weapon. Gurarara. Damien gave a simple nod. Fee asterisk. He then traced his fingers over the two blades as the wind howled around them. This is Yushi, the blade that shall render all to dust. Whitebeard's Murakumogiri started to pulse with impatience as it felt the presence of Damien's weapon. Hee hee. There isn't much to be said now. The blonde haired man said. F W W W M. Both weapons were coated by a thick armor of armament hockey as a red bubble started to cover them. And then they charged. Boom. It was a loud bang as if a bomb had gone off that filled the area as the pirates watched with unblinking eyes. They saw. The Earthshaker. And the. Sin Incarnate. Raced towards each other as the ground underneath them started to crumble away. Whitebeard grabbed his glaive with both hands as the weapon was raised over his shoulder. The blade edge is shining black. Damien similarly grabbed his weapon as his Yushi blazed the air in a slight inferno. Whitebeard was twice Damien's height so the sight was rather imbalanced, yet both carried great power in their attack. The two blades then clashed. Boom. An island-shaking explosion went off as the two supreme-grade weapons pushed forth with endless momentum, neither giving an inch to the other. Countless cracks started to form around the two men as the ripples of energy were sent out, echoing through the entire sea. The spectators were lifted from their feet as many ended up being thrown into the air while the remaining tried to hold their ground. The black clouds above exploded in the wake of the duel while black lightning rained down upon the island. The newer recruits were knocked out instantly. No fruit power apart from Yushi's residual effects as the two weapons continued their clash. Boom. Alas, the first exchange ended. GRRRRG. Damien's feet dug into the ground as he was pushed back. Whitebeard was also in a similar condition. The red eyed youth was pushed back 8 meters, whereas the giant man was only pushed back 2 meters. 
Damien felt a powerful and sharp buzzing feeling all over his body, aiming at his will and corroding it away. This sharp current courses through my body, it's the infusion of hockey. Damien concluded, and it was true, the ability to fully coat your attacks in Conqueror's hockey was certainly something he was lacking and it was visible in their clash. Again, Damien roared out, though this time he leapt into the air as his blade ripped the atmosphere apart. He brought down Yushi with enough power to crush mountains as it smashed upon the powerful Murakumogiri in Whitebeard's hands. B -o 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 -m. Another earth-shaking clash went off as the two blades resumed their discord. Sreech. Asterisk. Yushi was angry. The spirit residing within Damien's weapon was of the same grade as Whitebeard's weapon yet it couldn't go through. Boom. Damien was pushed back once more as he landed, lacking any scratches yet still not giving in. Again, this time he started to fuel every ounce of his hockey in his weapon as it started to seethe in anger, exploding into a crimson fury. Whitebeard did not change his approach. He twirled around his naginata as it sliced the air and met Yushi head on once more. Clash. Asterisk. B -o 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 -m. Damien's eyes blazed in persistence as his body started to fuel with separate power, swirling within his mind. Though the youth felt it, the buzzing destruction of Whitebeard's hockey had started to decrease. Newgate, who was greatly impressed by Damien's power started to feel the sudden change as his eyes widened. Gurarara, not bad, kid, F W O O O O. Many tornadoes raged out of the clash as everything within a few kilometers was starting to turn into rubble as the earth cracked in their wake. Thud, jihahaha, that red-eyed brat has gotten a lot stronger. A voice called out, Shaki landed on the far left of the duel. His hands went out as he calmed the battle down with his hockey. Ma ma mam ma, his seed will give me a powerful child. Big mom also landed though on the opposite side as she eyed the duel. Both of them contained the island shattering energy being released. After all, it would probably cause a little too much destruction. As for the pirates, around 800 had already died, 2100 were injured and the rest were lucky enough to be unharmed yet shocked by the ongoing fight. Dash. Boom. This feeling, I'm tapping into infusion, though it's barely the tip of the iceberg. Damien thought in his head. Both Newgate and Damien stood around 100 meters away from one another. Kid, this will end it, Whitebeard declared. Damien used his grand mastery over observation as he saw the man's weapon. A powerful sheet of hockey wrapped with emission. The emission was gently flowing around but there was something more. Crackles and sparks of raging tides amidst the sea of hockey, the infusion of supreme will. Damien replicated what he could. His Yushi started to swim in hockey as he added small strands of his will. His left hand clenched the weapon as the final drops of hockey flooded in. It was very small and thin, but it was there. A simple coating of Conqueror's hockey. Boom. The crater widened as the two rushed forwards once more. Whitebeard's eyes shined red as his Murakumogiri was brought down from above as a green arc of blade energy followed closely, ripping and tearing everything. Damien's Yushi raged and rampaged forwards, not allowing themselves to be pushed back once more. Crack. Rumble. Asterisk. The ground underneath had long turned to dust as the two blades pushed forth. Though something odd happened, the two weapons seemed to have stopped in midair. They locked in space with a small gap between them yet were releasing enough energy to level mountains. Dash. Katakori, who was watching from behind the powerful presence of Big Mom, was shocked to the very core. T they're not even touching. As for Whitebeard, he had seen this happen many times before. When he dueled the likes of Zebek, Shaki and Roger, it wasn't even close to as turbulent as he felt from fighting the stated above, but it was certainly mind-boggling on its own coming from someone so young. Dash. A wide smile was plastered on both of their faces as the repulsion ended and the blades finally connected. Boom. Both were pushed back once more. Whitebeard, went back two and a half meters, and Damien, six and a half. Dash. The duel had ended. Whitebeard, Shaki, Big Mom and Damien then heard something before any of them could speak up. Dot dot. Ha. Hua. He, deep breathes as a man with a great rush and before the commanders. The man collapsed on the ground as he carried a single piece of paper in his hands. Hum. Shaki raised an eyebrow towards the man. Damien walked towards the unconscious messenger and picked up the note. What is it, kid? Newgate asked. Damien summarized the note. Hum, it's a report written in blood by one of our pillars. They seem to be asking for backup. Clank clank clank. A man walked out from Skull Rock. He had a full body silver armor while carrying a matching axe and shield. This man is from Division 6. The armored man said, Andor San. Damien greeted him. 
It was the seventh division commander, Silver Axe. He nodded in greeting, you have gotten truly powerful, Damien Kuhn. My axe is no longer worthy of your blade. Shaki asked, sixth division. Where were they sent? Silver Axe answered right away, Shaki San sent them to G2. Nearly 6,000 men to rescue Kaido Kun. Ma ma mam ma, that fool Kaido got caught by Garp. Big Mom chuckled as she ate some candy. I have already tasked Division 8 and 9 to prepare, it should be enough, Andor said with his usual plain voice. No, everyone turned to the Sin Incarnate. Damien gave out a little smile, a crow seated upon his shoulder. Call them back, considering that of the 6,000 this one person survived with just enough energy to make it here, it's obvious that it is an ambush. Any more fodders will be wiped out, he said with little concern. Then what, brat? Shaki asked as he puffed on his cigar. Damien turned around and started walking in the direction of the island coast. My Yushi has not had enough yet. As for G2 and rescuing that fool Kaido, I'll do it myself. Chapter 92, five and a half days ago. Damien POV, once I reached the red line, I had made a clone to work on, black body, by doing some suicidal activities. I had him use Semi Kikan to cancel out my clones healing otherwise all the progress would be for naught. So he will spend a few months jumping off Sky Islands, holding the pressure of 10 kilometers in the sea, fighting behemoth class sea kings and whatnot till he attains the new physique. It took another half a day to fly from the red line to Hashinosu. I had used my persona and Seime Kikan to mix around into the masses. The first thing I noticed was the sheer amount of pirates, and then the new division and its head. Dash. First division commander, Edward Newgate. Second division commander, Shaki. Third division commander, Charlotte Linlin. Fourth division commander, Shikuyaku. Fifth division commander, Aina D. Damien. Sixth division commander, Kaido. Seventh division commander, Silver Axe. Eighth division commander, Captain John. Ninth division commander, Vacant. Dash. I haven't met John apart from the little confrontation we had at Sabayati in the slave auction house. That aside, the number of pirates in the divisions had ballooned to a great height. Dash. D1 has 3,000. D2 has 10,000. D3 had 4,500. D4 had 500 for Shaki's surveillance and information network. D5 had 10. D6 had 8,000. D7 had 1,500. D8 had 4,000. D9 had 0. Dash. That's over 30,000 pirates. But then again, numbers aren't everything, which is why my 5th division only had 9 men excluding me. Dash. Star Rocks Pirates Grand Fleet Star. 1. Supreme Leader of the Rocks Pirates, Zebek. 2. The Three Titans, Whitebeard, Shaki, Big Mom. 3. The Six Tragedies, Shikuyaku, Damien, Kaido, Silver Axe, Captain John. 4. The Pillars 500, Quasi YC, Low Tier YC. 5. The Fiends 4000, Yonko Crew Level Pirates. 6. The Forasaken 8500, Elite Paradise Pirates. 7. The Condemned 18000, Stronger Paradise Pirates. Star Other. I, the Ravens, Shaki's Informant Network, 200. E, the Rogues, Shaki's Surveillance Force. They overlook the pirates in the crew, finding traitors or other nuisances, 300. Dash. Strength-wise, most were fodders, but fodders are still useful. Speaking of divisions, I ought to go find mine. A while later, on the far side of Hashinosu were many ports with hundreds of ships. But if you were to trace your way behind Skull Rock, you would find another, smaller port. There were only three ships of which two were empty and the one in the center had a few men. Nine men could be found here. Some lying around, some. Drinking, some sleeping. Thud. I landed in the center. I had also changed my appearance to Sebastian Michaelis as I wore some rather refined clothes. And instantly the nine men flashed from their positions and surrounded me. Who? Ryu. Their weapons were out and ready to slice me into pieces. They each have decent hockey, good. I judged. I didn't reply to them and watched them nod at each other. Bozo, Obazoba, Bazoon, go. The long brown haired man said. The three men seemed to be triplets, tan skin, bald with buff bodies and bulging muscles. One carried a mace, the other, a broadsword and the last one, a giant axe. Oh, each one of them brought down their heavy weapons with impressive power as the floorboards beneath me cracked from the weight. Thump, asterisk, that won't be enough, I said with a mocking voice. I had stopped all three weapons with a single finger as a small red bubble was wrapped around it. Careful, he has a powerful hockey. A voice called out from behind me. Bang. Asterisk. Pew pew. 
Two guns went off as the bullets neared my open back. Clattering metal, the bullets simply bounced off my back as they landed on the ground. I turned my head and saw two men. One had a potbelly with a thick mustache and slicked back hair. While the other had a simple long hairstyle and sharp eyes. Pascal, Pablo, fall back. Your hockey is not enough. Shing, asterisk. I hear the crisp cutting of air as a few blades were unsheathed. Go, Juni, Thane, the man in charge said. Swoosh, two shadows flashed forth utilizing Soru as they appeared before me. Slash, asterisk, a saber and a two-handed sword were aimed directly at my throat to decapitate me. Clank, asterisk, yet none left a single mark as the black edges slashed my neck. Muda, with that said, I crossed my arms across my body as a fist jammed into both of their chests. Pua, they were shot back and nailed into the sideboards. Fury of the Apes, crushing finale, stomping fever, the triplets attacked once more as their weapons held me down. One sword style, beautiful death. I looked up and saw a mesmerizing figure of a peacock unfolding its wings. It then turned towards me as the many feathers turned into razor-sharp blades, flowing together with the man's katana as it descended upon me. The attacks rained down from all directions, swords, maces, blades, bullets. Mid-tier Yonko commander level attack, let's test out my new divine vitality. I thought, boom, the nine men seemed relieved as the attacks connected, yet the strongest among them was wary as he peered in the direction of the ruined ship. All the floorboards near the center were demolished as smoke filled the area. Hum, and it was cleared to show the figure of a man. And no way, we didn't even draw blood. Bakana, amidst the many cries of shock was a single phrase. That type of demeanor, giving one hope and then snatching it away. It's good to see you once more, commander. The brown-haired man said with a sigh. Hee hee, you guys have gotten slightly stronger, I said. I had changed back to my original appearance as they glanced at my face. Commander, dash, garug asterisk, loud gulps filled the ruined ship as the smell of alcohol pervaded the air. Ya should have told us it was you, boss. I smirked, I needed to test your progress. It's passable. The nine men were Indra, Pascal, Bozo, Juni, Thane, Bazoon, Heath, Obazoba, Pablo, my rather few division mates. Patron, we tracked your progress all over, Pablo spoke up. Bozozozo, as expected of the commander, you even defeated the black arm. Bozo yelled out, Bazokizo, that's right, Aniki, the commander is truly youthful. Bazoon nodded, Zobababa, I'll drink that. Obazoba roared out as they clinked there. Drinks and gulped them down. I brought something else up, I have some things for you all. I then snapped my fingers as some devil fruits appeared before me. Dash, present time, I had heard the report from Nick, my crow commander of news. It seems as if all of the 6,000 troops sent to G2 were wiped out. I volunteered to go as it was a nice way to not only practice my Yushi combat arts but also to test out my powers. Plus, I would be able to tease the crap out of Kaido. As for the duel with Whitebeard, I lost terribly. He only used his hockey in his attacks while relying on the power of Murakumogiri. As in, the strength of the future, strongest man in the world was not used. Let's not even get into his fruit powers, a man of tremors. Dash, Edward Newgate, Whitebeard, age, 35 years, 1 month, height, 21 feet 10, devil fruit, tremor tremor fruit p, fruit rating, 6.5 stars, fruit mastery, brand mastery 2, skills, overwhelming inborn strength, soru, gepo, hockey, low advanced for o, peak advanced for a, and grand mastery 2 for c. Strength. Peak of high tier Yonko. Dash. It's been like two years since I had seen his power level. He went from mid tier Yonko to peak of high tier. As for his hockey, his conqueror's spirit seemed to have exploded after his frequent duels with Roger and the likes in the past year. Speaking of hockey, I did get a rather excellent notification that I ignored at the time. Ding. Asterisk. Your conqueror's hockey has reached the final step before the grand mastery stage. Congratulations. I had learned to replicate Whitebeard's infusion of hockey during our duel in the heat of the moment as my own ambition was wailing in refusal, allowing me to grasp the intent of the ability. I know how it works, but I need a powerful foe to fight in order to fully learn it. Dash, Fleet Admiral's office, Marineford. Kong was seated upon his chair with a grim face. This is unsettling. They have begun to gather now, the seas will be more chaotic than ever before. He murmured in slight anger. Step step step. A large man walked in and sat to the side of Kong's desk. Kong-san, 
What is our plan? He asked. Kong looked at the man with the black afro and the glasses. Sengoku. Many problems are surfacing. How's the drafting going? He questioned. The admiral nodded and went on to report. Suru had used her fruit to wash the majority of Enigma's past pirates. We gained nearly 35,000 soldiers from it. As for the drafting, all the smaller branches in paradise, as well as the bigger bases have begun to enlist people. Sengoku drank some tea and continued, we recruited another 8,000 from paradise and nearly 25,000 from the outer seas. Our forces have grown to nearly 170,000 marines now. Kong's face didn't change which caused the admiral to raise an eyebrow. What wrong, Kong San? We are the strongest we have ever been. The fleet admiral shook his head, you know what, all that commotion from the black clouds is surely Zebek. As for Roger and his crew, the rumors are already filling the seas about them reaching the last log pose island of Lodestar. He then smashed his teeth together as the room shook in Kong's anger, and that blasted the news agency. Their autonomy is nothing but a problem. Bam. The desk before him was crushed as he sighed out loud. Escanor is also up to something. The world is a mess. Sengoku nodded at his superior's words. We also got a report from G2. They are prepared for the ambush. We will try and eliminate as many as we can. That little monster Kaido is a perfect bait. Six thousand have already been killed by us. Kong nodded as he leaned back on his chair. Yes, every pirate removed is for the better. They are arrogant right now under the massive bounties of their commanders and will be easy to pluck out. Dash. The marine base of G2 in Paradise Sea. Third Pav. G2 is currently the second most fortified base under the marines. The base is in the first half of the Grand Line. Thick steel walls, mounted cannons, tens of warships and nearly 7,000 troops on standby. It is usually under the command of a vice admiral, though this was not a normal occasion and an admiral was called in to oversee it. Clear the bodies. A loud roar filled the base as hundreds of men raced back and forth. Loud steps. The ground rumbled under the footsteps of the person yelling. Giants. Three of them donned vice admiral coats as they stood as guards before the colossal base of G2. They each towered to over 40 feet in size. 12 plus feet. The base was under heavy rainfall as it washed away the endless streams of blood from the countless bodies lying around. 6,000 pirates were destroyed under the might of an admiral. Inside the base, research facility. W-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O. You little monkeys are still trying to poke me with your little toys. Kaido laughed out loud. He was strapped down to the ground. All his limbs bound my metal heavy enough to hold up mountains as many IVs were connected to his forearms, constantly supplying liquids to keep the beast weakened. Kaido-kun, it would be better for everyone here if you would simply cooperate with me. A man said, oh, Vegapunk, just wait till I'm free of their little shackles and I will break you in half. Kaido said with little care. The lead scientist donned a lab coat and two long rubber gloves running up his arms. A mask over his mouth as his messy hair was streaked back. This is the genius scientist, Vegapunk. Asterisk Psi, we have already deduced your relation to the continent polar ores. This attributes to your incredible strength and endurance but it does not explain your nigh invulnerable physique. The man sighed, Woro ro ro, just get me some sake at least. Dash, G2 exterior outpost. G2 had many smaller watchtowers built around it with marines keeping eyes in every direction. Hey, Enzo, just sit and play cards, man. A marine said with a tired voice. Another man laughed, yeah, sit down and relax. You think anyone would be foolish enough to come here again after we wiped out 6,000 of them? Don't kid around. We have an admiral on our side. Newer recruits like you are always so uptight. An older marine said as he played poker. Enzo was a young man who recently rose through the ranks and had become a captain after graduating from the elite training course at Marineford. He was a by-the-books kind of person. Kaido of the Beasts, the 6th Division Commander of the Rocks Pirates, there's no way we are safe even with the power of an admiral. He thought as he peered into the sea as the rain continued to pour. Hum. He thought he saw something as he picked up a monocular to check. A ship. It was a small galleon in the distant horizon, racing towards the base. He was unsure of what to think. After all, it's just one ship. You um, sir, we have some company, he said. The rear admiral sighed as he walked over with a nonchalant expression. You stupid kid, there's no one out. His words were left unfinished as his eyes widened. Thud. His body fell to the ground, dead. Rear Admiral Dono. The men yelled out as they ran towards him while Enzo was frozen a few meters away. H his eyes, they're completely melted. 
It even went through the skull. A medic reported, A.H. He also fell to the ground he vomited his organs out, though they were in small cubes. Raise the Alar. Ow. E-U-G-H. Ah. One by one, bodies fell like flies. The entire watchtower was filled with corpses, all but. One. Dash. Commander, the other watchtowers are clear. A voice came out of a transponder snail. The one with the snail was standing in the center of the tower as Enzo eyed him in pure shock. Hum, good, he said as the snail went to sleep. The pirate then turned his eyes towards Enzo. A marine captain A, you are quite courageous to be able to stand with all your dead friends around you. He said in an amused tone. Enzo gulped as his eyes cleared up with some boldness. His shaking hands calmed down as he gazed into the man's crimson eyes. Enzo was only seven feet tall, dwarfed by the pirate before him. The marine captain took a deep breath as he spoke up with clear defiance. I am not afraid of you. The one standing before him was none other than Damien as he chuckled in amusement causing cold sweat to form on Enzo's back. The sin incarnate's eyes glowed a menacing crimson as an eerie red mist started to emanate from them. Then you will die, braver than most. Chapter 93, Hashinosu, The New World. Shaki ne Sama is back. A man roared out. A fleet of ships had just arrived with Shaki's division. Poof. A cloud of smoke floated over the young woman as she walked down the ramp. Her assistants walked behind her. Hum, what a morbid atmosphere, Shaki commented as she smelled the stench of blood and death in the air. Shaki Sama, you finally returned from Sabayati. A secretary yelled out as he collected her jacket. Hum, tell me who has arrived so far, she said while heading towards Skull Rock. Yes, he said, the three titans have arrived. Silver Axe Sama, Captain John Sama as well. Damien Sama left to save Kaido Sama. Shaki stopped abruptly. Damien Chan left G2. She then turned towards the fodder and shook him by the neck. Speak, when did he leave? Ah, H he left nearly six days ago. The man stammered. Thud. Shaki tossed him to the side and looked to her left. Amber, tell me who the admiral dispatched to G2. She asked with a solemn voice. It's not Kurawashi is it? Amber answered immediately. Admiral Kurawashi was initially stationed there. However, he was called to the New World recently. Fu asterisk. Shaki let out a relieved sigh as she shook her head. Is there something wrong, Shaki Sama? Isn't Kurawashi the weakest of the three? Amber asked as she noticed her boss's odd behavior. Dot dot dot. Kurawashi's strength is indeed nothing impressive, but his devil fruit is not something you can take lightly, especially at a marine base. She shook her head. Never mind that. Let's go. Dash. The marine base of G2. What is going on here? A vice admiral yelled out as he saw the chaos. G2 was a large base and currently, they had lost all contact on the west side. Vice Admiral Bollocks, W were under Ada, boom, R-A-A-A-W-R. The report was interrupted as a loud primal roar filled the region. Bollocks narrowed his vision towards the trespasser. His face turned solemn, ancient zone. The one attacking was a giant dinosaur nearly six meters tall. It had a thick dome-like skull with bones protruding out of its body. The ancient model of the Pachycephalosaurus. Little Marines, come play with daddy. Bozo yelled out as he was in his base zone form. He swung his tail into the mounted cannons as they were destroyed by the sheer weight and strength. Boom. A volley of cannonballs erupted as the cannons further away started firing. Bozo zo zo zo. This won't be enough. Bozo then charged ahead with his dome head easily enduring the heavy fire, every step leaving behind large footprints. Chained explosions. His skull smashed onto the cannons as they were utterly decimated. Dash. On the other side of the field was another problem. Another ancient zone, Bollocks, yelled out in panic as he saw the carnage. The commander is quite generous, let me repay him with a spectacular performance. It was a giant snake. Obazoba had eaten the ancient model of the Titanoboa. It had razor-sharp scales that stemmed out of its cold skin with a green pattern printed over its body. Sharp fangs added with incredibly thick scales made for a deadly enemy. Obazoba was in his base form, nearly 13 meters long with enough power to crush humans like toys. Whip. The thick tail coiled around and ripped through the air as it smashed upon the platoons of marines before it. A tall rear admiral of 16 feet height ran towards the Titanoboa in an attempt to wrestle it. A powerful punch was thrown as the snake danced around the marine, coiling around his body. Ah, the squeezing strength was applied all over the man's body as his insides were crushed and his eyes popped out of their sockets. Enough of this madness, a voice thundered out as a man landed near the destroyed area. Vice Admiral Bollocks, a man nearing the mid-tier Yonko commander stage. 
he had a buzz cut with a rather apparent scowl etched on his middle-aged face. Pirate scum, I shall kill you now. Yet suddenly, a shadow danced out of the distance as they attacked the vice admiral. Slash, asterisk, a sharp saber cut forth towards the man as he blocked it with his own sword. Clang, asterisk, hum, you have decent hockey. Bollocks commented as he clashed swords with the attacker. It was Juni who had arrived. Juni danced through the air as he was on the losing end, yet continued to attack. He imbued impressive hockey as his saber descended towards the vice admiral. Soru, Bollocks disappeared and reappeared behind him. Slash, asterisk, D-I-E, his hockey-clad sword cut down towards Juni's open back. Furl, yet something odd happened. Juni's body suddenly blew up into hundreds of pieces of paper as they floated in the wind and landed elsewhere. Fruit powers again, bang, 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 asterisk, three shots suddenly went off as some odd-colored bullets hit the vice admiral in the back. Ah, uh, he stammered as the bullets started to liquefy and enter his body. W what is this? The man questioned as his body slowed down. A strong dose of depressants slowed down anyone, am I amigo, Pablo said as he smoked his cigar. The drug drug fruit allowed one to use all types of drugs. This includes stimulants, depressants, hallucinogens and many even drugs that affect your hormones. Dash, charging radon, Bozo in his dinosaur form charged towards the stunned vice admiral as his hockey clad skull smashed upon the man. Crack, the spine broke as he was sent rolling in the dirt as the rain poured down over his immobile body. Thud thud thud, three shadows then landed in front of the pirates. To think bollocks would fall here. One of them said, Pablo continued his smoking as he commented, three more vice admirals. R-A-A-W-R, S-S-S-S-S's tilde, furl, a large amount of paper rained down as a man stood beside the ancient models. Splash, two people appeared, one rather dramatically. An orange-brown stream of liquid materialized into a humanoid form. The vice admiral clicked his tongue, a logia as well, just who was so bold to attack with such drama. Dash. In the forest outside of G2, Indra, those six are fighting off three vice admirals, Thane said as he narrowed his eyes to the distance. Hmm, the vice admirals inside have been drawn out so we can begin the next plan, Indra said with a thin smile. I was getting bored sitting here, Bazoon said as he picked up his weapon. The boss will hold back the admiral, us three shall sneak in and rescue the beast. Indra gave out the order. Let's go, dash, main gate of G2. The main side of G2 had two sets of walls. The main, one was where the 4,000 men were guarding alongside the giants and another wall with another 2,000 men far back. The walls were painted with camo green with many cannons mounted upon them. The rain kept pouring as a soft fog flooded the area, limiting the view. The 4,000 marines were led by the three giant vice admirals. Don't panic, it's just some rats on the west side. A giant thundered out as he smashed his club on the ground as some cracks formed around it. Oh oh, the thousands of marines roared out as their morale was sky high. On the far left, nearly 500 meters away was a rather large hill and mounted upon it was the flag of the world government. Thunder, a bolt of lightning suddenly hit the hill as sparks of light went off. A blazing flame ignited the flag as it was obliterated. A marine commodore who ate the zoom zoom fruit saw the activity and narrowed his vision. There's someone there. His words were enough to draw the eyes and the attention of the thousands of marines. Step, 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 rhythmic steps resounded the region as the ground seemed to slightly shake in their wake. Even in the pouring rain and the coming fog, every marine was clearly able to see the silhouette of a man. The zoom zoom fruit user identified the person. T that is, he took a deep gulp as his body subconsciously moved back, knocking the people behind him. It was a primal instinct to retreat immediately. This was occurring all over the base. They couldn't make out the face or any real physical attribute but they saw one thing. The crimson eyes reflected through the countless raindrops, peering their way into the marines' souls. The vice admirals did not cower, after all, a giant's pride is not something to overlook, but they did feel the intimidation. The middle giant looked at the shaken marine, speak up, Commodore, who is it? The man furiously nodded as he looked back at the man overlooking the base. H he's one of the Rock's Pirates Division commanders. He took a deep breath once more and went on, the one who unarmed Zephyr Sama and obliterated G4, Sin Incarnate Damien. His words echoed over the drenched marines as they eyed the dark shadow half a kilometer away, fearing their lives. After all, this man destroyed G4 so can't he do the same thing here? Yet all thoughts disappeared as a single voice went off. It was not magnified or anything, 
just the voice you would use to talk to the person in front of you yet it was heard everywhere. What terrible weather! As soon as the words were out, something rather astonishing happened. A red column of pure energy blazed out from the dark silhouette as it raged into the sky like a flaming pillar. F W O O O O M. Under the display of the red dawn, the clouds, the weather, the rain, it all started to shake uncontrollably as it was starting to divide into a red checkered like pattern. The endless clouds were now nothing but red gases with a cube like appearance. A sound of pixelation went off as it filled the entire island of G2. The entirety of the weather was obliterated as they were reduced to microscopic sizes. I is this the power of a god? A man uttered while the rest were left dumbfounded. The visage of the pirate was also clear as the feeling of death swarmed in their minds. A bounty of 2.3376 billion berries, I can't even count that high. We can still win this, right? D don't panic everyone, there's 4,000 of us and one of them. We can surely win, an optimist shouted out, dash. Damien, who had cleared up the weather, was overlooking the base. With the rain removed, it was a rather impressive structure. Draw out the Admiral A. I only have two days maximum before any troublesome reinforcements arrive, he said. While humming a tune, his mission fully thought out, Damien leapt forth. Boom. The mountain beneath him started to crack all over as it was crushed to bits from his jump. F W O O O O. The air howled as Damien descended from nearly 200 meters in the sky. Thud. Asterisk. The Marines felt a quick tremor as the Sin Incarnate landed with a crater beneath him. Do not fear him, justice will always reign, the giant vice admiral yelled out as the marines put on a brave front. Damien now stood half a kilometer away from the small army of marines. A wet patch of grass separating the two forces. Shake. The marines had gathered some courage as they were suddenly caught off guard as Damien charged ahead with little care, zooming directly at them. His eyes were indifferent as a small smile crept onto his youthful face. The newer recruits were frozen. He's coming. The man's head was removed from his shoulders as Damien fired some air cannons towards the masses, shredding hundreds in the process. A marine commodore roared out as he slashed down a sword onto Damien's back. Snap. The blade shattered into small pieces as Damien grabbed him by the face and ripped it out, his spine dangling in the air. FWMMM. A beautiful black shine reflected off the hanging spine as it was coated in armament. FWOOO. Damien used it as a whip as he slashed across the hordes of marines, ripping them in halves, dyeing the grass a fresh scarlet. Boom. He then leapt into the air and sent down some powerful attacks. Crescent Slash. He used the evolved version of Rankyaku as a silver arc of energy raged onto the ground as it met the marines. Ah, ow, ah ooh oh. What does it take to bring out an admiral? Damien thought in his head as he continued the killing spree. He could easily remove these fodders with a single attack but he wanted to warm up a little before clashing with a stronger foe. You're open, a giant vice admiral yelled out as he brought down his gigantic hockey clad axe upon Damien. Clang, asterisk, Damien's blackened hand grabbed the axe by the blade as cracks creaked upon it. You're in the way, shatter, the axe shattered into countless metallic pieces as Damien's hand shot forth and grabbed the giant by the face. Crumble. Cold words echoed in the head of the giant as he felt the weight of a mountain squeeze his very being from all sides as blood rushed to his head. Dot dot dot, splat. Right before the remaining 2,300 marines, a powerful vice admiral was squashed as endless volumes of blood poured down. V's asterisk. The scariest thing was the sin incarnate who was doused in blood started to exude a black mist as the crimson liquid was absorbed into his regal attire. Stop struggling. Since your admiral won't come out then you are nothing but living corpses. He said, impending disaster. Damien's body suddenly erupted with powerful crimson energy as a ripple of pure pulverizing energy was released from his body in a spherical shape. Everything in the vicinity was crushed from skin to bones to dust. Even the air itself exploded from the attack. Groans of despair echoed through the wrecked grounds as the remaining men stood in pure fright. Only 120 remained. You scum. I'll end you. The giant roared out as he charged forth with great speed. Damien pointed out a single finger aimed at the vice admiral's head. Air cannon. A thick beam of air currents shot out from his finger as it nailed itself onto the marine's head. The vice admiral dropped dead with lost, open eyes. Che, I've run out of patience. Damien shook his head with a sigh. FWWWM. His left arm shined with a solid coat of hockey. Per up asterisk. A red mist started to exude from the arm as another red bubble wrapped around it. It was a pure combination of advanced hockey and his fruit powers. 
Damien was about to smash his fist onto the ground, no doubt with enough power to split the very earth for kilometers on out. Rumble. Yet something odd occurred. Rumble. He looked around the landscape as the island seemed to be shaking from a terrifying power. Rumble. Damien raised an eyebrow as he saw the earth mold itself, rising out with incredible speed and mass. In a wide circle around the Sin Incarnate was a cage of pure earth. A range of mountains. The remaining marines rejoiced. Nearly 800 meters in the sky was a silhouette of a man. His arms were raised, mirroring the formation of the sudden rise of mountains. Damien looked up with a grin. You were rather late to the party, Basara San. Did I catch you at a bad time? Chapter 94 I should have dealt with you back at Water 7, Basara muttered as he saw the carnage. The entire first wall had been cracked and ruptured while barely 100 marines remained. Zephyr may have failed but I shall eliminate you now. Dash. Basara. Age. 47. Height. 9 feet 8. Devil Fruit. Mountain Mountain Fruit P. Fruit Rating. 6.5 stars. Fruit Mastery. Brand Mastery 3. Skills. Full Master over the Rokushiki. Hockey. Mid Advanced for O, High Advanced for A. Strength. Middle stages of high tier Yonko, max potential reached. Dash. He isn't as strong as current Whitebeard but a powerhouse nonetheless. Plus, he's in his absolute prime right now. Damien thought in his head. Perfect to test out my new capabilities. Rumble. The island groaned as pieces of earth were literally snatched from their gold, accumulating into a mountain floating in the sky. Trembling earth. Escalibur. Basara wasted no time as the flying mountain started to shave away, forming a grand sword made of earth. VW0000. The atmosphere wailed in torment as the gigantic structure was sent raging down upon Damien. The size was nearly 450 meters tall and 40 meters wide. 450 meters approximately equals Empire State's building to the tip. The gargantuan sword rippled through the earth as it descended with enough power to level an island to rubble. FW0000. The wind currents generated from this attack would surely send out large tsunamis at the very least. Alas, it fell directly upon the Sin Incarnate who had a slightly troubled expression, does this guy care little for collateral damage? Rumble, oh, no wonder, he made a cage around me to hold the blast, Damien sighed as he saw the earth surround him. The mountainous sword hit the ground and even Marineford felt its wrath, many islands away. B o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o m Dash East side of G2. You see that, the Admiral has arrived, you're already lost. Vice Admiral Thier exclaimed as the earthquake from Basara's move shook the entire island. Pascal, the man of sake just smirked in reply, the commander will be fine, you should worry about yourself. Heath was standing next to him with a little smile. As for the others, they simply did as told, hold back the Vice Admirals. Very well, you can take your delusion to your grave. The fight continued. Bozo the Pachycephalosaurus and Pablo vs. Vice Admiral. Obazoba the Titanoboa and Juni vs. Vice Admiral Schlong. Pascal and Heath vs. Vice Admiral Thier. Dash. Research facility of G2. The lights were flickering on and off. The scientists were running around like headless chickens as the marines were just as confused as the rest. Dust rained down from the slowly collapsing ceiling as panic flooded in. Well, except for one person. Woro ro ro. A laugh boomed. Who is it? Who has you all so shaken? Kaido was having the time of his life. Sigh. Kaido-kun. It seems your friends have arrived, Vegapunk said with a troubled expression. The transponder snail then reported to the entire base. This is not a drill. All forces are to evacuate immediately. I repeat, this is not a drill. Vegapunk turned his attention to the marine rear admiral who rushed into the facility. What is the matter? The man was slightly on edge. Drive. Vegapunk. We must leave now. The Sin Incarnate and his forces have arrived on the island with far greater strength than expected. The scientist was hesitant. What of Kaido Kun? He is quite the specimen. The rear admiral shook his head. My responsibility is your safety, doctor. We must leave. Agish. Kaido thundered out as the nearby equipment was blown out. Damien. He's gonna rub this in forever. Creek. The chains holding the beast down started to shake under his rage. The IVs supplying the serums had begun to run out as some liquids dripped down from the falling rocks. Auk. His muscles bulged as the veins popped out, his fight spirit materialized in a black aura as his eyes glowed red in fury. The rear admiral gulped, I did not sign up for this. Doctor. Let's leave, now. And so they ran away, hastily. Dash. West entrance of G2. 
G2 had 7,500 soldiers of which 4,000 were incapacitated. The remaining 1,500 in the base got in formation with the 2,000 guarding the second wall as they met another force. Indra, Thane and Bazoom. Ow. A loud roar echoed through the halls as the lights shifted on and off, making for a rather terrifying scene. Indra, however, was there during the Encephala Island raid and had fought alongside Kaido so he picked it up immediately. Thane, I'll go find the beast. You should go to the storage area. He then smirked, you know the boss likes to steal fruits and treasures. Thane nodded as he saw Ued away. Indra then turned towards the other pirate. Bazoon, the man looked at Indra, go crazy. Bazoon the berserker gave out a menacing grin as his broadsword smashed on the ground as he heard the marines gather up. Dash, main entrance, why you think he's dead? A marine asked, the man beside him nodded, asterisk cough cough of course he's dead. That was a freaking mountain the Taisho dropped on him. There's no way he survived that. A, N, Taisho meaning admiral. Basara narrowed his eyes at the wreckage, waiting. Rumble. The ground shook. The ginormous pieces of the destroyed sword made of hill-sized rocks started to move. Boom. A 70-meter wide boulder was suddenly launched from the ground as it rocketed towards the floating admiral. Basara waved his hand as the piece of earth was pushed aside as he heard a sharp voice. You throw another mountain at me and I'm gonna lose it. It was a casual voice as a black shadow that started to slowly fly in the sky, not even using the air to float, but actually fly. Damien was now eye level with Basara as he gave a smirk to the scowling marine. You, what a terrifying endurance to shake off a mountain of that size. Color me impressed, young pirate, Basara said in slight surprise. Damien chuckled, well, I'm something, aren't I? Pat pat, he then patted his attire, trying to remove some non-existent dust. Basara gave out a sigh, unlike Garp, I do not like to, test, my foes. Come, boy, Soru. He then disappeared in a flash as he suddenly appeared behind Damien in less than a tenth of a second. Bam! A black fist smashed forth. F W O O O. Yet it hit nothing but air as an explosion went off from it. What speed? Basara thought. No, his body dodged before I attacked. He gave out a grim scowl. Your observation exceeds mine. You are a greater threat than I expected. Rumble. All of a sudden, the entire island below started to warp and mold as the admiral raised his hands in the Air, you think I'll just wait for you to complete your attack? Damien asked as he shot forth. His arm shined a gleaming black as a bubble of Ryu was added. It smashed upon the admiral's chest. Tekai. Go. Hardening. Basara used the absolute version of iron body as a black coating was applied onto it. Bam. The punch connected. Ah. Uh, the admiral was pushed back. A drop of blood streamed out of his lower lip. Emission technique as well. Zephyr did not report this. Gaining enough room. Basara resumed his attack. The ground below once again started to terraform as huge blotches of land were raised up. Giant balls of earth. F W O O O. Huge amounts of air were displaced as the newly crafted structures cast a shadow that encompassed all of G2. Trembling earth. Ravaging earth storm. Damien was rather shocked. Basara now floated in the air with tens of mountains raised behind him as they started to create their own gravitational pull. This is the power of the Marines' top powerhouses, eh? Damien thought as he saw the display. He then put out his left hand as a shadow warped around it, molding into his grasp. Vwoo. The air was cut apart as torrents of air raged down to the marines below as the weapon was made clear. Allow me to render your little rocks to dust. Basara squinted his eyes upon the weapon and felt the fluctuations that seemed eerily familiar to Whitebeard's glaive and Roger's saber. Very well. His words out, Basara simply pushed forth his arms as a gesture to advance. F W O O O asterisk skr. Tornadoes were created as vortices formed from the charging landmasses. Damien readied his Yushi as the blade started to exude a mist so overwhelming that it was crushing the air to void. Boom. A sonic boom shattered the air as the Sin Incarnate rocketed forth, a madman charging at oncoming mountains. Swing. He simply reined back his weapon as some Ryu was added into it. And slashed down towards the first mountain. B O O O O M. The mountain trembled in the sky as large boulders rained down upon the ever collapsing base. W R R R R R R. The mountain then changed into a red pattern as it was slowly reduced to dust. Damien did not halt, he kept racing forth towards the frowning admiral as the mountains kept on coming. Boom, bam, slash, asterisk, rumble, boom, crash, asterisk, kaboom. One by one, the floating island destroyers were pulverized into microscopic particles. 
The path cleared as Basara was caught lacking. Damien did not miss the chance. Crimson Comet. His body suddenly exploded into a red shooting star as it shot forth with unending momentum. Yushi raised forwards as the two clawed blades were shaking in impatience. B O O O O O O O O M. A rather jaw dropping display remained for the lucky survivors as they saw a flash of red in the sky clash upon the floating admiral, as the latter used his powerful hockey to combat it. Yet he was sent flying back all the same into the ground. Grr. A wide road of utter destruction followed the admiral as he went rocketed through from the powerful attack. Dash. West side of G2. As the chaos ensued in the base, Damien's division mates followed through with their orders. Bazoon was going on a frenzy, slaughtering the thousands of marines that remained. Boom. Waving down his mighty sword, he cut down the numbers astonishingly fast. Damn pirate. A few surviving rear admirals raged on as they clashed with the pirate. B-A-Z-O-Z-O-Z-O-Z-O. That's the stuff. Dash. Research facility. Creek. Asterisk. The chains wailed once more as they suddenly gave up. Snap. Kaido was finally free. Each step he took sent out many tremors as he had reached maturity in the sense of age. He was now around 28 feet tall. 8.5 meters. Wuro ro ro. These damn. Chains. Crack. He cracked his shoulders as the brute strength flooded his body, invigorating his spirit. Thud. A shadow flashed in front of him. Kaido. You are free. Indra had arrived. You're Damien stooge. Che. I'll beat him up soon anyways. He hmphed as his hockey raged out. Take me to the fight. Dash. Main entrance. Boom. Basara shot out from the ground, his chest bleeding profusely. Cough. He spat out some drops of blood as he was quite pissed. Quote dot dot dot. Not even 18 years of age and you can already reach this level. If it weren't for Zebek I'd say you would be the main problem of the marines. A pity you won't make it out of here alive. Damien landed on the ground, his eyes squinted as his weapon pulsed with anger. This is quite a lot he thought as his observation scanned the admiral. Rumble. The ground shook once more. Rumble. It was like a heartbeat. Rumble. At this point, G2 was nothing but some walls as the ground all over the island was swimming as if it were a liquid. Heck, even trees, metals, corpses, blood, water, everything was changing into rocks and adding to the river of earth. Awakened fruit power, Damien exclaimed as he saw it. Changing matter into a different element to aid in your attacks, he's converting everything into earth and molding it into whatever he desires. He concluded. The rumbling concluded as a behemoth of a structure stood before the sin incarnate. Stretching a shadow that stretched for kilometers on out. Trembling earth colossus. It was a humanoid, gargantuan ability with Basara at its core. It stood nearly 500 meters in height as dust rained down from its glory. Twin swords in both hands as mountains floated around its body, a fear-inducing sight. Chapter 95 Damien was caught off guard seeing the absolutely ginormous mountainous structure. Yet his conqueror's spirit did not allow him to hesitate. First descent. Empyrean. Before the eyes of the Colossus was an explosion of volatile energy exploding into a fury as all matter was compressed to dust around it. FWWWM. A thick layer of hockey shined all over as it covered the mass of crimson with its own beautiful shine, making for a frightening creature. Damien was plated in hockey as some crevices and cracks remained all over, pulsating with raging crushing powers. Damien then leapt off the ground and into the sky, driving his Yushi towards the core of the giant humanoid mountain. Burr. Tornadoes were created as Basara brought down a single sword in an island leveling diagonal slash towards Damien. Boom. The pure weight was overwhelming. The armored Sin Incarnate's sword smashed upon Basara's sword as the former was sent flying back into the ground, crashing through endless debris. Drip drip. A few drops of blood fell out of Damien's mouth as the healing kicked in and fixed everything instantly. Damien could not take on the Colossus head on so he took on another approach. He leapt out from the crater and ran towards the left side of the giant. F W O O O O O. The air rumbled as Basara brought down his left foot to squash the pirate. Boom. The weight of 100 mountains smashed upon the bedrock beneath as tsunamis were sent out from the island. Damien had on the last second leapt off the ground and onto the leg of the Colossus. He was now flying parallel to the leg, racing over and towards the Admiral who was at the crown of the structure. Raging winds. The masses of earth flying above and around Basara's shoulders started to warp in shape. Dreaded devastation. They took on a large thick bullet-like shape of 200 meters diameter and they were shot upon its leg. Boom. Boom. Crash. Asterisk. Under the flurry of the raining bullet mountains, Damien. 
was using his grand mastery of observation to pick up the absolute paths remaining to reach the top. His future sight was running overdrive as he found the smallest of flaws jumping through and on the slightest of openings. Unfortunately, this did drain more stamina than preferred. The Sin Incarnate kept racing forth as he reached the center of the giant near the chest area. The raining mountains only increased in intensity as they would instantly turn around after being dodged and returned due to the awakened powers. FWWWM. Damien's left arm was coated in black as it extended onto his weapon as a red bubble followed. He then injected great amounts of pulverizing powers as the two blades shuddered in the air. Leap. A flurry of mountains raced forth as Damien leapt off of the core and into the sky. He utilized his flight and raged forwards. Crimson Comet. Yushi flooded with endless power as Ryu Haki flowed in synergy in torrents of force as Damien shot forth in a blazing finish, lighting the air in an inferno. Boom. The Supreme Blade slammed onto the Admiral's Colossus as all the energy held in was sent raging out as it rippled through the mammoth of a mountain. Crash. Asterisk. The gigantic Colossus trembled as cracks formed all over all the while a red river of energy seemed to glow all over, it threatening to crush it to bits. Damien had retreated and watched from afar with a frown. FWWWWM. All of the sudden, the giant creature that was on the edge of collapsing started to turn a gleaming purple as the entire Colossus was coated in pure armament. There are certain limits that you cannot cross with sheer tenacity, boy. Basara's voice boomed as his body recovered from the attack. Vwu. The air radiated as the giant picked up the twin broadswords in each hand as they seemed to eclipse the world. Trembling Earth. Twin Devastation. The two swords raged down towards the floating pirate. Void Space. A crimson curtain nearly twenty meters in size opened up before Damien as all matter beyond its protection was turned to absolute void, crushing space itself. B O O O O M. Rumble. Asterisk. Even though the clash occurred nearly 400 meters in the sky, the energy released echoed through the broken mountain as the near islands also felt the chaotic winds. A sail. Damien's shield was not holding up as cracks were forming all over. He then sent out a red mist that gathered behind the large shield, building up in pressure. Pop. The gases popped as the shield absorbed the energy and raged onwards in an attempt to push back the admiral's attack. B O O O O O O O O M. The swords did crack as large boulders rained down like meteors, yet the majority of the structure held. Shatter. The shield of pure pulverization fractured and shattered like a glass hit with a rock as the 450 plus meter long hardened swords collapsed upon Damien's body. Boom. Damien became a shooting star as he was launched into the earth below, crashing upon the bedrock and continuing to drill down as the momentum slowly ran out. Dash. At this point, Damien had been fighting Basara for nearly 22 hours now. East side of G2. Charging Radon. Bozo's hockey-clad head slammed upon the Vice Admiral as the latter was pushed back. Damn ancient zones and their hard heads. He cursed. Bang bang bang. Pablo continued his cigar as his guns fired off sending rounds of mixed drugs. Some slowed the body down, some messed up your nervous system, some affected your energy level, some interfered with your breathing cycle, quite the combination. Dash. All corroding venom. Obazoba's giant fangs descended upon Vice Admiral Schlong as he was attacked by another one of Damien's division mates. Juni, the man who ate the special paramesh of fruit of the paper paper fruit, was releasing many pages that seemed to turn into many different things. Origami shower, the pages turned into swords, bullets, rocks, animals, weapons as they attacked the Vice Admiral. Dash, on the other side of these two battles, was one more. Devil's Spear Parade. Pascal the man of sake created multiple spears of pure alcohol as they dripped in concentration and raced towards the strongest of the three vice admirals. Tekai. Go. Tier condensed his muscles as they locked into place, making for a powerful endurance. Splash. Asterisk. The alcohol slammed upon the man as he was bathed in its glory. Huh. That it. Tier ridiculed him as he felt little pain from the attack. Pasasasa. Don't be so overconfident now. Heath. The quietest of Damien's comrades was standing by the side, his hands gesturing a snap. Snap. A U H H H H. The vice admiral suddenly blazed into an inferno as the extremely concentrated alcohol sparked immediately. Heath who ate the flint flint fruit was able to light anything of fire within a radius with nothing more than a snap of a finger. Dash. West side of G2. Boom. Wuro ro ro. Kaido was now clashing with the final vice admiral who Damien couldn't get to while Indra was mowing down the rear admirals who arrived to capture Kaido. I haven't fought for more than a year now. Boom. Bang. Bam. 
Kaido Kanabo Club was taken away so he was using his fists to rain down endless punches with great power upon the defensive giant, the latter struggling to keep up. Bazoon had already killed off the marines over the hours as he was now rendezvousing to the others while Thane finished collecting the goodies. Dash. G2. Damien was embedded nearly 800 meters in the ground where the temperature was burning hot though not enough to hurt him. He had had a rather raging headache as his body was bleeding from many places. I really need the black body, he muttered as the healing process kicked in. How come my fruit powers were so easily destroyed though? Is it because he's awakened? The youth questioned himself. Damien's muscles and tendons had ripped, not from the force or weight, but the emission hockey used by Basara. I can't win in a fruit clash eh? Dash. On the surface. Yes fleet admiral Dono, I will ensure their capture momentarily, Basara reported on a transponder snail, still inside his colossus. Or at least their deaths. Good. Be hasty. I sent Sengoku as support, he should arrive in no less than twenty hours. Kong informed him as the admiral nodded. Boom. The ground suddenly exploded as a shadow popped out. The Empyrean form was back on as Damien stood with a fully healed body, free of blood or scars. What is it, Basara? He looked down from the sky and sighed. It seems that the boy won't go down easily, I shall report to you soon. Kacha. The call ended as Basara narrowed his eyes. Boy, this time I will ensure you stay down. He bellowed out as the ground quaked from the weight of his body. Kaido is finally free and the rest are nearly done with the objectives. I cannot defeat Basara but I can surely hold him for a while. Damien concluded. VWOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOO
Haki ran down the entire arm as Basara shot it forth with enough power to sink the island. If my fruit is lacking then I'll just rely on my Haki. Damien bellowed as his body was exploding with the color of the Supreme King. His Empyrean release shot forth as it started to imbue another type of power. I can't defeat you because my fruit mastery is too low. Who decided that? Damien roared in his mind as his will responded to his plea. Amidst the gentle streams of Ryu Haki was a new current swirling around. It raged aggressively as Damien forced it to mix in. Skrr. Sparks of black lightning rained around the youth as his eyes seethed in fury, his mind raging on as the weapon in his grasp responded. Even the clear weather was starting to warp as black clouds rolled in, bathing the ruined island with darkness. Yushi greedily absorbed the new power as the blades were dripping with energy and the body of the weapon was shaking in impatience, ready to strike. Damien popped the air as he raged onwards too. Meet the Admiral's attack. Basara saw the change in atmosphere and responded. His colossus entire left body broke apart into rocks as they warped into a fluid state. They then swam in the air and reinforced the punch that was heading towards Damien. Trembling Earth Sovereignty, an arm the width of a mountain coated in impressive hockey raged on to clash with a small dot in the sky. Damien met the attack, Armageddon. Yushi crashed upon the eclipsing mountainous punch as currents of hockey shot into the arm and raged all over. B O O O O O O O O O O O O M. One strand of hockey focused on destroying things from within while the other aimed to weaken and tear apart the enemy's will. Ow. Basara groaned. The attack itself was something he could hold up to but the buzzing sensation of having your own will being eaten away was rather unpleasant. Basara himself had also advanced his armament so naturally Damien also felt the rippling sensation as it echoed through his body though most were stopped by his black bones. Crack. Shatter. The entire arm cracked into pieces and was destroyed yet Damien too was shot back from the repulsion and into the bedrock below. Basara's colossus fell onto its knees and it broke apart. Thud. The admiral walked out from the broken titan, his arm was a mess, the bone was definitely broken while his breath was rather erratic. Adding your own will to your attack, I've only seen Roger, Zebek, Whitebeard and Shaki do such things. What a little monster, he muttered while utilizing Seme Kikan to stop the bleeding arm. Thud. Damien landed back, his Empyrean form was in tatters with pieces of armor missing as the crimson powers were slowly fading away. His breath was not the greatest but if anything, his injuries were already healing to the point before the fight began. It had already been 30 hours in total now since the fight began and Basara had a noticeable amount of stamina left. Surrender, boy, the admiral said, his arm no longer bleeding. Tui, Damien spat out some blood as he gave out a grin after stabilizing his breath. Quote dot dot dot, I can do this all day. They were about to rush at each other once more but, thud. A shadow landed nearby as a giant silhouette was visible in the floating dust, reeking of endless fighting spirit. Chapter 96 Waro Ro Ro Damien, let me fight him. A loud voice erupted all over the ruined lands. He even had his club now. After beating his opponents he seemed to have looked for it before arriving here. Indra landed gracefully beside his boss. Commander, forgive me but I could not stop him. He apologized. Damien shook my head. Forget it, he's always been like this. He then turned to the far right and saw the rest of his division mates coming out from the debris and destruction. Basara frowned. To think I failed so horribly, no, it seems we need to rescale everyone associated with you, Damien of the Sin. He lightly chuckled, I wouldn't be surprised if you had something to do with the news agency but that is far too unrealistic. The broken rocks rumbled once more as they were lifted up. I simply need to kill you all here and now. Rumble. Asterisk. Basara went back into his colossus form as the ground continued to shake. Worororo, I can finally stretch. Kaido grinned as he cracked his knuckles. All the while a screen pulled up in Damien's mind. Dash. Kaido. Age. 18. Height. 28 feet 1. Devil fruit. None. Hockey. Mastered observation. Low advanced for A and high advanced for C. A. N. Mastered hockey is when you have fully mastered a color of hockey but cannot reach the advanced stage ever in your life. Strength. Peak of top tier Yonko commander. Dash. Sigh. I don't have the energy to waste on babysitting you Kaido. But we have barely 10 hours left and the entire sea region is long since surrounded by mountains. The only way out is to beat him. Damien said while humming. He himself did not feel the real threat of time as much since he could just swim away and be perfectly fine though it would reveal a card he doesn't wish to be used. Dash. At this point, all of D5 and Kaido were lined up facing the enormous titan that is the Admiral. 
Basara reformed his twin swords as he seemed intent on his task to kill the pirates before him. While Damien heard a ding in his head. Dash. Yushi Combat Arts 23% Mastery. Dash. Boom. The ground erupted as the men gathered moved to their position. Kaido and Damien jumped into the air as Indra followed behind them. Basara then shot out a single punch clad in hockey as his swords rested in the ground towards the three. One sword style. Evil Befall. Rame Hake. Great Vanquish. Boom. Under the combo of the three, the arm was completely pushed back as tons of rocks rained down upon the ruined lands and the broken shores. The other couldn't fly like Damien so they instead leapt onto the retreating arm and ran over it while the former flew towards the open chest. Damn brats. Basara roared out as some floating hills above turned his gigantic body swirled around into sharp spears and shot out. F-W-O-O-O. The air was pierced by the raging attacks as they neared the three. Devil's Festival. Great Depression. Paper Tornado. Alas, the coming attacks were intercepted by others as the main three raced on. Boom. Pascal shot out spears made of pure sake while Pablo rained down drug-induced bullets with the help of Juni's paper fruit. Oye. Pablo. Give us a boost. The triplets yelled out. Coming up am I amigos. Bang. 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 Asterisk. Pablo shot some energy bullets and other types of drugs that would temporarily increase one's strength significantly though with backlash. Ow. The three yelled as they ran forth to provide cover. Dash. Crashing thunder. Kaido's blackened club sparked with purple lightning as he swung down his club upon Basara's left shoulder. Boom. The sheer power sent a tremor of shock down the giant. On the other side of the Colossus, body was Indra. Basara's right hand was eclipsing his entire body as a black shadow was cast upon it, making his eyes glow in determination. Grasp. The giant's hand fully enclosed the pirate as Basara added great strength into crushing the man ruthlessly. One sword style. Dance of the white. Whiz. A white light erupted as Indra shot out of the grip in a swirling tornado, his sword spinning with his body as the thick rocky fingers were slashed apart. Phew woo. Indra then turned into a white flash as his body shot onwards, cutting and raising the entire arm of the giant in a spinning motion with great speed, reaching the deltoid in one smooth attack. U-G-H. Basara, under the constant attacks, felt some heaviness. Basara's remaining hand went towards the seated sword. Divine Thunder. Kaido's menacing eyes blasted open with great spirit as his own conqueror's hockey raged forth while a Ryu-like flow of energy ran out with his attack. Boom. The entire arm of the admiral was destroyed. Charging Radon. Whiplash. Fury of the apes. Even worse, the two ancient zones and the berserker raced on and targeted Basara's left leg while his attention was locked on the approaching trio. Bam. Bozo's Dino head coated with decent hockey smashed onto the leg while Obazoba's tail whipped around and attacked the same place as the former. Crack. A web of cracks ran all over the body as Basara was simply running out of mountains to fix it with. Devil's Path. An orange-brown spear of concentrated alcohol formed. As it raced onwards to the crack. Snap X2. Heath snapped twice from both hands as the sake blazed into an inferno. FWOOOOO. The air exploded from the heat as the spear crashed onto the minor injury of the Earth Titan. Boom. The left leg was utterly destroyed as the Colossus stumbled forwards due to disbalance. His eyes were aiming at the beast as a shadow whizzed before his eyes. With no limbs to work with, Basara was in a pinch. F-W-O-O-O. Under his angered gaze, Damien's crimson eyes flashed with some mockery. Yushi in his hand started to blaze with power as Damien charged ahead to the falling giant and towards the very head where Basara resided. Armageddon. B-O-O-O-O-M. The infused attack combining the conqueror's hockey, armament hockey and the pulverizing fruit power slammed upon the giant face of the Colossus, sending nerve-destroying shocks through the body, rippling down every limb as cracks followed. U-A-G-H-H. Basara groaned out as his entire body was utterly destroyed as his trembling earth colossus shattered apart. This did not equal his loss as he quickly exited out from the crown with rising exhaustion. In midair and under the pull of gravity, Basara simply used his masterful Rokushiki as he regained his footing. However, he forgot one thing. After enduring all those attacks, his control over the mountain slightly staggered. Awakened Paramesh of fruit users can change matter into their heart's desire, but it is only temporary. As soon as the control is lifted, it will revert to its original form. So the island that was gobbled up and turned to rocks, reformed back to other objects for an instant till Basara changed them again. And from those objects were something Damien's could use. Wood Dragon Shackles. 
The raining mountains that reverted to objects of nature were under Damien's control as the wood and the trees swarmed out and grabbed the admiral and locked him in the sky. With the basara completely open, Damien did not hesitate. His yushi was raised with both hands above his shoulder as he fell with the embrace of gravity, directly towards the frozen admiral. The weapon was exploding with pulverizing energy as a red streak of light followed Damien's descent. Empyrean. His body was then coated with armor as volatile energy as his strength leapt up by a factor of six. Adding in emission and infusion, Damien brought down his mighty weapon. Yushi Combat Arts, Tectonic Shift A red dawn bathed the island as the scarlet meteor plummeted down in all its apocalyptic glory. Black lightning sparked everywhere as Basara felt the grazing, plunging sensation of Yushi boiling hot blades pierced his proud chest and through his marine coat. The memories of his career, his victories, his losses and his supremacy flashed in his eyes as darkness slowly took over his conscience. Boom! and they finally crashed onto the ground. Dash, Hashinosu, Whitebeard was drinking away as Shaki smoked in silence. Shaki and Linlin -lin were laughing at the side. What is it, Shaki? Newgate asked as he saw her frown. Poof, she exhaled a cloud of smoke. Hum, I'm worried about the boys. Sigh, Damien Chan has gotten stronger but Basara is not an easy target. The Admiral title is heavy. Whitebeard just smirked. Gururara, Shaki, don't worry about that brat. I've seen his spirit, he will surely live. She smiled in return, you're right, his growth has surprised us every time. I should have more faith in him. They were talking about some trivial things. Dot 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 dot, boom, instantly, the island shook. Whitebeard, Shaki, Linlin, -lin, Shaki, Silver Axe, Captain John, heck everyone on the island felt it. Their eyes darted to the west side of Hashinosu. Thick black clouds flooding in as a small raft. Docked on the shore, step. Step, step, footsteps echoed the gloomy air as a man walked out, wild hair protruding his scalp, scars decorating his open chest and a menacing smile that sent shivers to one's soul. Silence. Everyone stopped as they felt the dread. Every step the man took caused the nearby trees and nature to shrivel up as they were drained of all life. X ahahaha, looks like I'm late again. Dash, skull rock, within the giant skull of Hashinosu sat the top leaders with a single person sitting in the front. Rocks D. Zebek had returned. Gurug asterisk. He was drinking sake and feasting on raw sea kings. Zebek, your usual flair has not disappeared eh? Whitebeard said as he continued his drink. Xahaha. Newgate, that glaive of yours is rousing my lust for blood. He cackled. Molten blade. Mokashiroku of the supreme swords by his side was shaking in impatience. Don't destroy the island, Taiko, Shaki said as she brought in more food. Hee hee. I was just joking, I would rather have a decent meal after all that time in Death Valley. I can even feel lonely. Xahaha. Shaki narrowed his eyes, Zebek, the army is ready. The captain of the rocks pirates shifted his eyes to the golden lion who had no reaction. Good, but, they lack proper drive, I'll see to it soon. Zebek said as he continued his meal. He then turned his head to the side and saw the new member. You're that Captain John Shaki told me about. The man in question bowed with a sly smile, in the flesh, Johohoho. I have heard of your tales and heard you make a lot of gold. Newgate scoffed from the side, just another greedy fool chasing berries. The one in question just laughed, Joho Hoho. I am a pirate after all. Gold, treasure, women, what else would you want? Whitebeard just looked at him with irritation as Zebek spoke up. Hmm, where are those brat? Damien and Kaido, he questioned with a loud burp. Shaki answered, Damien Chan went to free up Kaido from G2. They should be fighting Basara by now. Zebek paused, X ahahaha, interesting. He grinned with a savage expression. Newgate finished his drink, Zebek. The man looked at him. What's our next play? He asked him. The great sin simply gave out a burst of psychotic laughter that seemed to echo through the entire island. The seas aren't big enough for two kings. Dash. Back to G2. Damien POV. An island once bathed in eternal rain, now reduced to rubble and dust. The lush forests were buried under rocks and ruined lands while the shores remained broken and cracked. The skies were a mess as remnants of the spirit of Supreme King sparked away. The base was no more and the marines were annihilated. I look around. My Empyrean release was gone as Yushi finally calmed down after the clash with Newgate. Kaido was still laughing while the others seemed astonished by the display before me. Ha! Ha! My deep breaths resound on the destroyed island. I look before me, the marine, the admiral. 
Basara's chest was profusely bleeding as his shredded skin and broken bones were visible. His eyes were white and his body was limp. Yushi is still embedded around his heart. I sat down as exhaustion slowly crept in. I could fight an equal opponent for at least a week but fighting a man a full sub-level above you was quite draining. Indra and the rest were also very tired. They didn't have stamina like me or Kaido and fighting for such lengths did weigh them down. Crash. They fell to the ground. Ha 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 ha. Bozo zozo. Zobababa. Bazo zozo. Pasasasa. Some laughed, some smiled, some grinned with accomplishment. An admiral. We defeated an admiral. Kaido just fell to the ground as he pulled out a gourd of sake from God knows where. It took nearly six hours to take him down with our combined assault. Nearly 36 hours in total since we came here. A crow landed on my shoulder and gave me the report, Sengoku would be here in five or so hours, more than enough to leave peacefully. Dash. After ten or so minutes of rest, I spoke up. All right, we should redo. My gaze along with the others instantly shot to the sky. A silhouette of a man slowly descending. I frowned as I sensed his strength. He's even stronger than Basara, almost as strong as Whitebeard. I jolted up and took out Yushi from the fallen admiral. The others also prepared for a fight, guns ready, swords drawn, eyes locked. Kaido was grinning, thud. The figure gracefully landed. I looked at him. White hair, blood red eyes, refined appearance, an umbrella added to a kind smile. I recognized him immediately. What is a man as aloof as you doing here? Patrick Redfield. Chapter 97. What is a man as aloof as you doing here? Patrick Redfield. The man who had just appeared as a pirate known as the Red Count, or the Aloof Red. His epithet originates from his independence and hatred over alliances and shows of camaraderie. According to Sengoku, he is a man who alone could rival the likes of Roger and Whitebeard in his prime. He was eventually captured and put into Impel Down after Roger's fall. He then escaped decades later due to Blackbeard's attack. Following that, he ate the mythical type fruit of the model vampire to regain the strength he lost due to age and faced the Strafuts. Dash. The man in question just gave out a refined chuckle, you needn't be so defensive, I am not here to fight you, young man. His words calmed the others down as they sighed in relief as Kaido just grumbled in irritation. Though I suggest your companions leave as Sengoku will arrive shortly, he said with a slight tinge of disdain. I felt the colors shift around him, my empathy picked it up immediately. Violet red strands of pride. I just nodded, you guys should leave. I still have some things to do. They nodded while Indra interjected, Commander, are you sure? Indra's observation has grown and he could feel the same thing he felt from Basara so he was quite anxious. I doubt the red count would reach so low to lie to me. I grinned. Go and prepare the ship. Kaido, you go as well. The ogre looked annoyed. Ha. Huh. I refuse. I want to fight him. He then pointed his cannibal club towards the man as some fighting spirit leaked off him. You can fight Shiki or Linlin -lin once we reach Hashinosu, until then, go drown yourself in sake or something, I said offhandedly. Eventually, they left. Dash. Patrick Redfield. Age. 39. Height. 8 feet 6. Devil Fruit. None has an item that ate a devil fruit on his body. Fruit Rating. Skills. Absolute Talent in Observation. Complete mastery over his body allowing him to produce red shockwaves and purple mist in his attacks and movements. Hockey. Grand Mastery I-4-0 Mastered Armament Hockey. Grand Mastery I-4-C. Strength. Upper Stages of High Tier Yonko. Dash. Redfield waited in patience with his usual smile, his body leaning on his large umbrella. I turned to him, now, Redfield San, to what do I owe the pleasure? The Red Count nodded, you see. Young man, many years back I met this interesting man. He paused for a second. He was a powerful man whose name shook the seas. A man even I respected. He then looked to the distant horizon, his ambitions and his strength led to his eventual demise but from the pirates now, he was surely a great man. His words brought shock to my face, for a man who disdains alliances and bonds, you seem rather close. He chuckled, you speak the truth indeed. Those who rely on. The bonds between pirates are nothing but excuses for filth and vermin. Yet he was different, like me, he fought alone and was his own man. That is rather impressive but what does this have to do with me? I asked the aloof Red. Redfield gave me a curious smile, yes, you, sin incarnate Damien. I came here to meet you. And why is that? He walked up a bit and looked into my eyes, that is what makes me so bewildered, young man. He continued, since the person I speak was given the epithet of, the god of war. Yet his actual name was Inadi. Ares. 
His blood red eyes narrowed at me, how can a pirate who was said to have died 18 years ago share the same surname as you? Coincidence. I think not. My eyes widened at his words. I looked at the man with certain degrees of wondering. You knew my father. Dash. Later on, Red went on to talk about his desire to meet my supposedly dead father as he was a big name in the era before Zebek's era. Redfield who prided himself in his independence found him admirable and sought him out to a duel yet found nothing but the news of his death. Alas, many years later, he heard my name and came to meet me. The man I thought to be some washed up fodder ended up being some dead powerhouse. Quite the interesting turn of events. Dash. Red San, I have never met my father. He stumbled upon my mother and eventually left the island before my birth. I cannot help you, I told the man. I was three feet taller than him so it was interesting. This was the first person I met that was shorter than me yet more powerful. He slightly nodded, a pity, I would clash weapons with your father had he been alive. A pity indeed, he then twirled his umbrella around. Very well, young man, I'm sure we'll meet in the future. Though out of respect of your father, I shall hold back the coming marines, they got here quicker than I thought. And it was indeed true, they arrived three hours before schedule. Well, that wasn't the complete truth. Sengoku seemed to have lost patience and was gepoing here very quickly, no less than 4.8 kilometers away, his fleet of warships following slowly. Redfield then took out a pen and three leaves. Poof x3. A few shadows popped near me. I saw three men standing proudly. Basara, Whitebeard and Roger. I looked at Redfield's hand, your pen is rather amusing of an item. A pen that ate a mythical zone of the model Bakadanuki, I recalled from my past life. The Red Count grinned, I need no companions as I myself am enough. I just nodded as the fruit info popped up in my mind. Dash. Dog dog fruit. Model baked Danuki, raccoon dog. Zone fruit mythical type. Fruit rating. Allows the user or item to transform into a Baka Danuki. This form can be used to create clones of other beings when their names are written on a piece of writing. The clones created will mimic their fruits and abilities but the overall strength will be reduced. A. N. This is canon by the game, he ate the vampire fruit many decades later. Dash. Red's pen ate this fruit and he can use it to write names of people on leaves and spawn in clones. Though for some reason your name does not work with this wonderful pen of mine, how odd, he drained on as another leaf sat in his grip. My ancient voice cannot be cloned thus he cannot clone me, quite nice as I don't need my shadows running around. Until we meet again, Red San, I said as I was about to fly away to the ship though he called out once more. Before you leave, young man, can you answer me a question? He asked from afar, I waited in the air. Point. He used his umbrella to point to the far right. Basara, why leave him alive, your other friends may not be able to feel it but I'm sure you can, his heart still beats, though. Very faintly, I shrugged at the man, killing him now would be a waste. I did take an eye, however. Though something interesting happened, Red laughed. Pahaha, how interesting you are, very well, I wonder just how far you will go, young man. Dash, the sea beyond the G2. A few hours later, most of them had gone to rest or sleep. Kaido was drinking in the corner, he hiccuped every now and then. He would occasionally curse out loud and smash his club everywhere but that was nothing new. Thud. I sat down on a comfy sofa I bought from the store. Ah, it's nice to relax. I then looked at the items placed in front of me. After I destroyed and ransacked G4 at Amethyst Kingdom, I got some decent goodies. So I had sent Thane had gone to collect the goodies from G2 now. A few useful items. 1. Devil Fruits. 2. Some Mado. 3. Vegapunk's Notes. Dash. Fruits Wise. Dash. Zone. Hair Hair Fruit. Model Snow Rabbit. Insect Insect Fruit. Model Lepidoptera. Dragon Dragon Fruit. Ancient Model. Ankylosaurus. P-A-R-A-M-E-C-I-A. -E lotion Lotion Fruit. Allows the user to secrete lotion from their pores. Swift Swift Fruit. Allows the user to increase their speed drastically. Dash. I also got one grade grade sword and three skillful grade sword. I got some of Vegapunk's notes that were left in a hurry to escape. He was working on understanding devil fruits and Kaido's special physique. I will give them to a seer later. Dash. That aside, I did mute some notifications I got during the fight. Ding. Asterisk. Your conqueror's hockey has reached the grand mastery stage and has generated two skills. Congratulations. You have unlocked the skill's ultimate skills, weather warping and natural dread. Your strength has increased to the upper stage of mid-tier Yonko. 
Congratulation. Dash. Ultimate skill, weather warping. Description. This allows you to mold the weather to your liking. At times, your emotions will also be reflected in the weather. Ultimate skill, natural dread. Description. Your body will naturally release conqueror's hockey that will make all beneath you tremble in fear. Makes the chance of betrayal and backstabbing almost null against you. Anyone afraid of you shall never be able to fight at full strength against you. Dash. Well, they weren't all that useful but more luxurious if anything. Though the second ability could be valuable at times. Sybil, show my stats. I asked in my head. Here they come. Dash. I na d. Damien. Age. 17 years, 3 months. Height. 10 feet 7. Status. Tired. Bloodline. Fishman human hybrid. Physique. Black bones plus. Strength. Upper stages of mid tier Yonko. Devil fruit. Pulverize pulverize fruit peak of high advanced mastery. Weapon. Yushi of the Supreme Grade series. Yushi combat arts comprehension. 44%. Seastone resistance. Immune. Skills. Hockey down arrow. Observation hockey mastery. Brand mastery I. Armament hockey mastery. High advanced. Conqueror's hockey mastery. Brand mastery I. Dash. Points balance. 3631 SP. Less than quests available to be claimed greater than. Dash. My strength went from the early stage to the upper stage and will only continue to increase. My clone is also working on my armament hockey by going for the black body. Other than that, Brand Mastery also brings forth another ability to all users. I look at my right arm. Per up asterisk. A red bubble of Ryu hockey bubbles all around it, gently flowing in simple currents, waiting to be used. I look at my left hand. Gur spark. The air starts to grumble as some black lightning coil around my arm. A raging dark red coat of hockey aggressively churning, ready to be unleashed. Kaido who was sulking in the corner from a mood shift turned his eyes towards me. Oye. Oye. Hick that's what the crazy captain uses, he. Muttered. Heavy steps. He trudged on towards me and looked at my arm with inquisition. Hum, something like this, he murmured as his right arm flexed with muscle. His eyes glowed black as he was playing around with his hockey. This guy, he has a lousy talent for observation but his conqueror's hockey is quite high up there. I thought as I saw him. I then smirked. F-W-O-O asterisk. I flashed in front of him in. Bam. A heavy blow to his face as ripples of force swam around his ginormous head, echoing through his skull. Ah, he groaned. Thud. He went full Humpty Dumpty as he had a great fall. Twee. He spat out some blood as his crimson teeth shined with a grin. This power is very nice, I'll master it and use it to beat the shit out of you, Damien. He declared. I rolled my eyes, yeah, yeah. That's if you weren't locked up in impel down by then. Though I'm still waiting for something else. He tilted his large head, for what? I smirked, for a, thank you, of course. Didn't your mom teach you to show gratitude, you oversized ogre? He jolted up but the buzzing infusion from early on made him collapse back down. H.A. I could have escaped if I really wanted. I didn't need you to come. Is that right? Last I heard you got one-shotted by Garp a year and a half ago. R.A.H.A.H.A. The beast was left with a giant bump as he lay unconscious. Did you see that headline when you were chained up? Kaido got up as he grinded his teeth in anger. T-C-H. Just wait, I'll use my club to shatter you in half. Your measly bounty tells me a different tale. Chapter 98. Dash. Two hours after Damien's departure from G2. Thud. Sengoku lands on the destroyed lands as he sighs. Damn that Redfield, to think someone like him would actually save others, he mumbled. He then looked at the once powerful marine base. Thousands of marines, billions of berries, a symbol of power, all in ruins. The grassy landscape was long gone. Just patches of withered dirt with giant rocks burying the field. Ravaged forests, thick clouds of dust, destroyed walls. A battle that leveled the island in less than two days. Sengoku then spanned his observation and located a faint heartbeat. Basara, he exclaimed as the admiral eyed the unconscious man. Sengoku's face warped in bewilderment, an admiral defeated in such a small amount of time and it was just a modest amount of pirates led by a youth. His hand curled into a fist. Bam. Sengoku slammed his hand onto the ground as cracks ran out from his punch. After ensuring Basara was in a stable condition, Sengoku took out a transponder snail. Peru. 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 Kacha. Dash. Marineford. Fleet Admiral's Office. Boom. 
A loud explosion filled the enormous marine fort as ripples of force extended through the lands. G2 destroyed, thousands dead, Basara in critical condition, Kaido escaped, this is ridiculous. Kong's voice thundered out as a solemn atmosphere filled the room. Many big shots were witnessing his anger. To think Basara would fall, let alone in less than two days, Admiral Kurawashi murmured from the side as he leaned his head on the wall. Not only that but to be left in critical condition and at the cost of an eye. Vice Admiral Suru, also known as the great advisor of the Marines, gave out a sigh. We judged the young man too lightly. Giving him the title of Zebek's protege was a mistake and has spread fear into the masses. His strength has grown to such a disastrous level, she said. Garp who was munching on some crackers also seemed slightly serious. Hum, I guess the boy likes to take away body parts when he defeats Marines. Isn't that right, Zephyr? Biwahaha. The purple-haired Vice Admiral just shook his head in. Dissatisfaction, the ability to speak does not make you intelligent, Garp. Zephyr, who was defeated by Damien a year back, had lost his right arm. Yet now he fashions a newly crafted arm made purely of sea stone. A single punch would easily shake up any fruit wielder. Garp just chuckled as he picked his nose, but it is quite amazing, that kid from Water 7 would reach this level so fast, not bad. Kurawashi shifted in his seat, Kong San, an admiral seat is now open until Basara can recover. Plus, that event is coming up soon as well. Suru added, we should take advantage of what is about to happen. We won't have many more chances beyond that. Kong who had slightly cooled down. Asterisk sigh, indeed. With that set to happen in a few months, Basara will be needed. But now comes the case of that boy who had caused so many problems. He then slammed down a bounty poster on his desk, Aina D. Damien, son of the war god, the man who caused quite the ruckus in my years as an admiral. Kong rubbed his forehead, according to Phantom who was there at G2, this pirate is also the user of the 13th Supreme Blade. He is the core of this terrible event. His words brought out many reactions, after all, the birth of the new blade was almost as world-shaking as Zebek's awakening. Kurawashi eyed his superior. The boy wields two devil fruits of great destruction, a supreme grade weapon, a great comprehension of hockey. If not for Zebek, he would certainly be our greatest problem. Suru frowned in her seat. Garp caught her expression, what is it, Suru-chan? She gave out a heavy sigh, we had a discussion pertaining to the rocks pirate when they caused the Water 7 incident years ago. And now here we are again. I said it then and I'll say it now, these pirates will soon become a threat that cannot be contained by the navy, from Borealis to Enigma to Herja to G4 and G2. Her eyes grew solemn, it is best to purge them before all of the new world falls into their hands. Kong suddenly stood up, agreed. I'm afraid with our hands full just fighting them off, we will not be victorious, not without heavy casualties. He turned to the admiral, Kurawashi, go and make contact with the World Economy newspaper. We may have lost the control over the news but we cannot have the defeat of an admiral be too overblown. The fleet admiral glanced at the marines before him, I will head to Marijoy myself and speak to Xerxes and the Garose. Spread the bounties in my absence. Dash. Three days later, Kong had made a certain plan with the help of Xerxes to destroy the rocks pirates and also spoken with the five elders. New bounties were released of the attackers and the escapee as their feats were resounding the seas. With the public's eye already pointed at the rocks pirates from before, this event was even more shocking. The stronghold of G2, a mighty beacon of hope for the world under the power of an admiral was destroyed and the invincible mountain had shattered. Such an event could not be concealed and with Morgans working on the reports, well, let's just say every child and their mother knows what went down. Kurawashi though was able to reach a deal to have the news remain objective and highlight certain things. He then went base to base to spread some propaganda and use the chaotic event to fuel the world military draft and increase the flux of recruits. It worked wonders. Dash. The politics aside, the Sin Incarnate and his division had made the headlines. Even topping the angelic war that happened not so long ago. Wanted. R-A-E-Z-O Thane. The Scavenger. 129 million. Dead or alive. Wanted. I-G-N-I-O Heath. The Inferno. 180 million. Dead or alive. Wanted. Droga Pablo. Drug King. 200 million. Dead or. Alive. Wanted. Vode Juni. Paper Cyclone. 219 million. Dead or alive. Wanted. T-R-I-O Bazoon. The Berserker. 240 million 300,000. Dead or alive. Wanted. T-R-I-O-O Bazo B-A. The Barbarian. 250 million 200,000. Dead or alive. Wanted. 
TRIO Bozo, The Rampage, 260,100,000. Dead or Alive, Wanted, VOCATUS Pascal. Devil Spawn, 343,800,000. Dead or Alive, Wanted, Zenora Indra, Swift Death, 444 million. Dead or Alive, Wanted, Kaido, Kaido of the Beasts, 1,161,110,000. Dead or Alive, Wanted, Ina D. Damien, Sin Incarnate, 2,837,600,000. Dead or Alive, Dash, as of now, the Rocks Pirates 5th Division is now worth over 5 billion berries. The smallest division under Zebek's banner yet one of the strongest in terms of pure power. As for Damien, his name, regardless of his age, is now held in the same light as the other titans of the Rocks Pirates. He is now the fourth titan crowned by the public, the navy and the pirates together. His feats ranging from, defeating a rear admiral at the tender age of 14, killing three celestial dragons and attaining the epithet of, Sin Incarnate. Holding off Admiral Sengoku and being revealed to have two fruit abilities. Attacking and killing the overlord, Thaddeus Enigma. Causing the West Blue Massacre. Destroying the marine base, G4 and causing the Amethyst Kingdom Crisis. Disarming the Admiral Candidate, Zephyr. Forging and welding a supreme blade. Destroying G2 and defeating Admiral Basara. With such a history of terrifying feats and doing it all before the age of 18 was enough to see him as a powerhouse on his own, rather than being in Zebek's shadow. As for the sword fanatics, they have already noted down the name of Yushi as the newest addition to the Seijo o Wazamano. Dash, Hashinosu, the new world. Six days later, the division ship finally reached Hashinosu as the ramp fell upon the sandy beach. You feel that, Damien? Kaido questioned as he eyed the giant skull rock. I nodded with some excitement, yep, the boss is back. Walking down the road to Skull Rock was quite interesting. For one, the looks of reverence and fear stemming from the crowd of thousands of pirates. The worst of the worst gazing at us like we were monsters, quite amusing. I didn't even need my empathy, skill to see their fear, it was practically oozing out of them. Thud, a few who were too close even fell to the ground, courtesy to my new skill, natural dread. I tasked my division mates to just laze around while Kaido and I went to the core of the island. Dash, Skull Rock, the air was quite surprisingly calm. I could feel the powerful presence with my observation. We went up the hundreds of stairs until finally arriving at the top area where the executive hub was. Dash, Halt, I stop in my tracks as I saw him. Well, I suppose it was a natural response to stop in the face of an apex predator that was glaring at you with the eyes of death. It was Zebek just chilling before a giant glass window. I could feel a different aura around him. A bloodthirstier one. Damien, this is Zebek's ability he gained from Grandmastery over his conquerors. The ability, Shadow of Despair, is when the user will endlessly exude a certain feeling of despair upon all those weaker than them. Sybil interjected. I just nodded. Old bastard, you're back, I said with a slight grin. The man gave out his usual grin, XAHAHA. Kid, your hockey has grown a lot since I last saw you. I hummed, you're one to talk. I guess you awakened your fruit. Zebek's eyes glowed menacingly as my hockey picked up a threat. WSSS's asterisk. An eerily mist was released from his palm as it danced in the air in a frightening current. The atmosphere started to wither away. In its wake, ow, I grunted as I felt incredible pain. Wither. My arm was, dying. My left hand started to decay as the muscles dried out and the skin aged to dust. All the flesh had withered away. The only thing left was my glorious black bones that resembled a human skeletal hand. It was excruciating, feeling your nerves literally wither away as death itself pulled you into her embrace. It was a jarring feeling. It was the cold touch of oblivion that I felt when I died in my previous life. Zebek was intrigued by my bones as his powers slowly went away. Creak. The bones started to creak as the muscles, the tendons and the flesh reformed around them, my healing kicking in. XAHAHA. You have some interesting powers, boy. The man laughed from the side. A black blob of hair suddenly flashed towards me. Damien Chan, are you alright? Shaki was tending to my healing arm as the blood vessels began to reform and the skin grew back. I just smiled at the woman. I'm fine, Shaki Nay, it's good to see you after so long. She looked up and smiled at me. Ahem, you've grown taller in the past 18 months, a lot taller. She then gently rested her hand on my chest as she was too short to do much else, you've grown stronger, good. I hope you can live happily out of this cold dark era. 
Shaki was looking at me with a big sister-like expression as then turned to the side. Kaido-chan, you shouldn't drink at such a young age. The ogre grumbled, Wo ro ro ro, it's just for, celebrating my return. She narrowed her eyes at the beast as the latter looked away, resuming his drink. Creek. The door opened once more as the others arrived. Garara, you defeated that Basara, good job kid. Newgate laughed merrily. Jihahaha, G2 is destroyed as well. I'm impressed, I thought you would have been crushed by the mountain. Shiki cackled. I rolled my eyes at him, I heard you ran away like a little cat who had his tail stepped on at G5. So much for the golden lion, more like the golden rat. The man somehow frowned with a grin as his golden hockey started to stream out. Didn't you try this before, do you really think it would work now? I questioned him, my dark crimson hockey bursting out in equal fury, both pushing ahead with persistence. Boom, a huge spark of energy blasted off as the pirates nearby skull rock fell to the ground as their eyes rolled back into their heads. Ma ma ma'am ma, Damien, it's time I reap your seed. A loud voice shook the halls. I saw the voluptuous woman wearing loose clothes highlighting her curves. She had a large pie in her hand as she took giant bites every few seconds. A. N. Her figure for reference. Lin Lin, you should cut down on your carbs, it'll hurt your figure. She seemed rather annoyed, ha, huh? are you saying I'll go fat if I stop eating my sweets? Don't joke around, kid. I then raised an eyebrow, say, aren't you pregnant right now as well? You crazy woman, ma ma ma'am ma. ma. It's just twins this year, nothing too difficult to deal with. I sighed at the crazy chick, she was the only one messed up get pregnant in the rock's crew. Creek. The door opened once more as two men walked in. I nodded in greeting to Silver Axe and just eyed Captain John. J-O-H-O-H-O. -O -O. We met again, Damien Kid. You helped me with that hall of treasure at Sabayati. John laughed. I just gave him a smirk yet I thought something else inside. This guy. My hockey is telling me to be careful. He's scheming something for sure. I concluded. John, I didn't think you were bold enough to join such a crew. It's not exactly a place for the hesitant. I said to him. He just laughed it off. I just followed the road to gold and it has led me here. Our little discussion ended as the captain spoke. Up. Oh, it's good that you all are here. Burp. He gave out a loud burp as he finished his drink. With my powers awakened, the seat to the king of the world is close. His eyes then glowed in madness, X-A-H-A-H-A. -A -A -A. Only a few steps left and a few nuisances to overcome. He went on, the navy and the world government have ruled the seas for many centuries now. But now, I will have it for myself. His voice wasn't only filling the room but even reaching out to every soul on the island. The tens of thousands gathered on land heard his declaration as the weather above started to grow even more chaotic. Zebek's hockey was now materializing in solid form. The winds grew erratic as rain poured down. X-A-H-A-H-A. Our next stop is to remove the last of the overlords, the sin of pride himself. The world government will be next. He roared out as the land shook from his ambition. Oh wow. The pirates below screamed out with their hearts burning in greed. A jovial atmosphere picked up below as the men were lost in thoughts of attaining endless treasure, power and other material goods. Shikuyaku. Explain the rest, he waved to her as he went back to drinking. The woman nodded and stood at the center of the room. Poof. A cloud of smoke was exhaled as she began to speak, the overlord Escanor. I'm sure you've heard of his recent movements. He has been up to something grand for quite some time now. He is chasing a single ambition. To become the one and only ruler of the new world. Her words echoed in the dimly lit room as a cold wind graced us from the open windows. Shaki puffed out some smoke once more, he has invited every powerful crew in the new world openly to his lands. She said, it has already reached the outer seas that all the strong crews will gather in his little game by August. Escanor will host the pirate festival at his home ground of Superbia to challenge the last remaining pirates. She continued, the captain will take care of the sin of pride, the rest of us will hold back the other pirates and the navy, three months remain till then. Chapter 99, Mortem Island, two months later, nay San, the festival will be held very soon, Mahawk said with slight excitement. Toki who was cutting the boy's hair, just smiled from behind. Um hum, your niece San will be in the headlines again, she said with a soft voice. The boy looked over his shoulders with gleaming curiosity, they say it will be the dawn of pirates of this era. And that it will decide the future decade of everything. The green-haired girl gave a small nod, her eyes shining with slight worry, yes, all the pirates will come together to decide who rules the new word. 
I just hope your big brother won't get hurt. A voice interrupted their conversation, don't worry so much, Toki Nichan. Knowing Damien San he will be fine and probably do something crazy again. It was a lazy yet young voice, Kuzan stood nearby as his body condensed oxygen all around from the coldness of his recent training. Toki saw his lazy confidence and giggled, you're right Kuzan Kun, I'm sure Damien San will be alright. Similar thoughts were going past a purple-haired girl donning an assassin's attire in paradise as she readied herself for a battle against an underworld emperor. Dash. The new world. Boom. A loud explosion resounded all over the waters as the nearby ships were shaking. A black-haired young man with red streaks slammed his fist that was bursting with blazing crimson energy and black lightning against a giant opponent. With his glorious blonde hair and a thick white mustache, Whitebeard responded with his attack. A right fist that was covered in a white bubble went forth to meet the youth. A natural disaster raging towards the power of absolute compression as the two powers collided. The atmosphere on one half was cracking and shattering apart like glass as a white hue rained down. The other half was filled with ripping red energy as it tore the winds apart in its fury. B O O O O M. The two powers of great destruction continued to clash as the red one was starting to be overwhelmed. Boom. The white energy finally bashed through and smashed upon the younger pirate as he felt the power of a world-shaking earthquake. F W O O O. The young man shot through the air as his face was slightly bruised from the tremor as his legs dug into the sea, leaving behind streams of water. The crimson eyes of the youth shined as his body simply paused in the air, an explosion went off from the remaining momentum. He was floating with a frown. Damn, an earthquake to the face still hurts like hell, Damien muttered as he squeezed his jaw. Gararara, kid, you've been taking my hits for hours now. Damien's cheeks healed as he gave out an exasperated sigh. Awesome, you still haven't told me how you awakened your fruits I have to do it this way, Damien replied. The giant man chuckled, it's not the same. You just have to understand your powers fully. It would help to do it like Zebek. Go to the Isle of Disasters and you will probably do it. Damien just nodded, Extinction Valley. Right, I already found it but with the festival coming up very soon I rather wait till after. Whitebeard agreed, hum, good. Just be ready, Escanor is powerful. Damien raised an eyebrow, enough to duel the crazy captain. Whitebeard gave out a solemn nod, the festival is held at noon. Escanor will be at his strongest and far above me. Dash. Damien POV. After having spoken with Whitebeard, I did have some thoughts on the coming battle. Two months of grueling days passed as I continually dueled with the likes of Whitebeard and Shaki, though losing every single one. I also clashed with Linlin over a bet. She said that if she won, I would give her my seed. And that if I won, she would owe me a favor. She was quite powerful. Dash. Charlotte Linlin. Big Mom. Age. 29. Height. 28 feet 11. Devil Fruit. Soul Soul Fruit Special Paramesha. Fruit Rating. Ultimate Class Fruit. Fruit Mastery. Peak Advanced Mastery. Skills. Incredible Inborn Endurance and Power. Extreme Mastery over Seimeikikan to carry children during duels. Hockey. Mastered Observation. Mastered Advanced Armament. Grand Mastery I. Fort C. A. N. She cannot use Future Sight but can use Emission and Infusion. Strength. Upper Stages of Mid-Tier Yonko. Dash. She was completely on par with me and her fruit was quite powerful. This is much earlier than what was shown in the manga when I was alive so she had different abilities. For one, her homies. She did have Napoleon, her hat sword homie. She had a gun, a flintlock homie named Mars. A. N. Her weapon shown in the rocks flashback. Dash. The duel of seeds lasted five days straight with no breaks or rest periods. Her hockey was inferior to mine but she had far more experience in using it than me. My Yushi was slightly above Napoleon but barely so as it was fueled by her fruit powers which were above mine. Alas, the victor was decided with me standing above her fallen figure. She was quite bitter as she went on a reverse hunger strike and literally ate everything on the ship causing Kaido to roar around like an idiot. That said, I now had a favor from a future Yonko, nice. Dash. As for fighting Shaki and Whitebeard, it was mostly for my Yushi mastery and bettering my experience with Yonko class opponents. My infusion was greatly refined as well. Yet all that aside, today was a big day. Why, a little something something was ripe to be absorbed. I took out a fruit dial that had Aurora's night powers saved and clicked it on myself. Bling. Asterisk. My body started to shake a little as I slowly descended into my shadow and onwards to the abyss of darkness. Dash. V W O O O O O O. 
The wind circled around as my main body rose out of my clone's shadow in paradise. The clone was responsible for training my black body. Alas, two and a half months of constant suicidal actions and whatnot, he was finally ready. Merge. Our bodies shined bright as they walked into each other as I felt the oddness of my body. It didn't hurt, it just felt odd. My muscles, my tendons, my organs, they felt like a thick layer of skin had wrapped around them. With Seme Kikan, I felt the increase immediately. Ding. You have acquired a new physique, black body congratulations. A mechanical voice resounded in my head. Everything felt off. Blackening the inside of your body is a ridiculous concept and requires an extremely powerful vitality to sustain. After all, armament hockey is meant to be used externally and not internally. Yet with my divine vitality and Seme Kikan, it was possible. My endurance has increased at least 18 times as it did with my black bones and now I was a walking mountain. I would feel pain but I wouldn't bleed or bruise much against people not too far above me. Ding. Asterisk. Your armament hockey has reached the final step before the grand mastery stage. Congratulations. Ding. Asterisk. Your strength has entered the high tier Yonko stage. Congratulations. This did bring a smile to my face. Sybil, show me the stats. Dash. I na d. Damien. Age. 17 years, 5 months. Height. 10 feet 9. Status. Beyond healthy. Bloodline. Fishman human hybrid. Physique. Black body. Strength. Early stages of high tier Yonko. Devil fruit. Pulverize pulverize fruit unawakened. Weapon. Yushi of the Supreme Grade Series. Yushi Combat Arts Comprehension. 87%. Seastone Resistance. Immune. Skills. Hockey Down Arrow. Observation Hockey Mastery. Brand Mastery I. Armament Hockey Mastery. Peak Advanced. Conqueror's Hockey Mastery. Brand Mastery 2. Dash. Points Balance. 3631 SP. Less than quests available to be claimed greater than. Dash. My strength had increased. Good. My Yushi combat arts had improved, though it was slowing down every percent gained. My conqueror's hockey went up a level but I didn't gain anything except for better infusion. Dash. Few days later, I returned to Hashinosu. The ships were readying themselves to battle as the trip was a little under three weeks to Supervia. Puff. I looked afar as my hockey zoomed in on the lonely woman on the main rock's ship, the Titanic. I landed next to her. What's wrong, Shaki Ne? I asked. She turned to me and gave me a hesitant smile, Damien Chan, your hockey has advanced to the point even I can no longer track you. She was good at hiding it, but Shaki has become slightly lost in her thoughts for the past few months. You seem to be contemplating something rather troublesome to bring such a frown upon your face, Shaki Ne. She chuckled at my words, you foo foo foo, I guess I can't hide it from you. Shaki then looked in my eyes with a sigh, I have been thinking about myself, and just how long I can do this. I saw some reluctance and questioned, is this why you went to Sabayati when Zebek called the others back? Ahem, she nodded. During the years you all were gone, I had time to think, to think that maybe it was time to call it off. Sigh. She looked to the distant horizon, you know, Damien Chan, I found this great place at Sabayati, far from the public yet with a good location. She giggled, I sat by the edge of a cliff at Grove 13 and it felt quite nice. It made me think that the time to retire had finally come. I saw her lost eyes, hee hee, shaki nay, if. You want to leave behind piracy then I will support your choice. She turned and gave me a cheeky smile, hum. You want to get rid of your big sister so badly now. I smirked, it's not that, but I also think that forcing yourself to stay here will only gnaw at your heart more. You helped me day in, day out to train my hockey in the past so of course, I will support your choice. She turned around and rested her head on my chest, hum, you are right. I think I will have a chat with the captain about it. She then looked up with a grin, I didn't even realize but you have become quite good at talking to girls now, Damien Chan. I wonder what you did the past 18 months. Is this women's intuition? I thought as I saw her curious eyes as she traced her hands over my arm. Something like that, I said with a smirk. Eritilda my little brother has become a man now. She broke out in a teasing smile. I didn't think you would start a harem now. How cheeky. She somehow concluded that there were multiple, though I had no clue how. Asterisk cough well, it's just two girls now. I don't think I need any more as they are enough for me. I said as a smile appeared on my face. She raised an eyebrow, hum, if I didn't know your personality then I would surely scold you but I'm sure they will be happy with you. She then asked, 
is one of them that cute girl from Sabayadi, Aurora. I just nodded with a sigh, you could tell from all the way back then. You foo foo foo, I saw her eyes when you trained her. And then that amethyst kingdom crisis and you destroyed G4 only confirmed the thought. I then switched the topic, what's your plan after leaving the rocks pirates? She tapped her chin, hmm, perhaps make a bar or a restaurant at the spot on Grove 13 after we deal with Escanor. She laughed, hee hee, maybe you can bring your girls there one day. I smiled at the black-haired woman, you sound so mature but you are only 25, Shaki nay, maybe you should find a lover too. She tilted her head, you foo foo foo, maybe one day. Dash, later on the day, get ready to sail you worthless fools. Shiki's voice thundered out as the ships lined up in a fleet. His division held over 10,000 pirates as they all cheered their leader. I will break that Escanor's face myself. Kaido roared from afar as his 6th division followed behind. It was initially with 8,000 men but 75% of them had perished under Basara's hands, leaving behind 2,000. You foo foo foo, Kaido Chan, you should leave that to the captain or you'll get hurt, Shaki's voice called out from a single ship. She was on board the Titanic as clouds of smoke floated above her. Step. Loud footsteps echoed behind the woman as Zebek stood tall. XAHAHA, set sail. Captain John and his division were also on board. VWOOM asterisk splash. Asterisk. Whitebeard's fleet also pulled up from the far back left with his 3,000 pirates. And to the far right was Big Mom's 3rd Division and Silver Axe's 7th Division behind her. Damien had one ship with his 9 other division mates as he sailed beside the Titanic on the upper right side. A. N. Rock's fleet formation, see this. Dash. Damien POV. The fleet had begun its sail. As for leaving behind men to guard Hashinosu, there were none needed, so it was left empty. Of course, apart from the jovial mood, I could see the greed and gluttony swimming around the ships as the men had their eyes lit ablaze from the treasure beyond. Though most would die soon. Fodders aside, Shaki has decided to leave after we take down Escanor, I wonder just how much more chaotic it will get without her supervision and aid. That aside, over 30,000 men were sailing towards Superbia with Zebek at the core. Strength-wise, we were quite loaded. Whitebeard and Shaki had both started to enter. The top-tier Yonko stage with me at high tier and Linlin nearing it. Kaido and Andor could both hold back vice admirals with their top-tier Yonko commander strength. As for the captain, well he was a monster on his own. Dash. Rocks D. Zebek. Age. 45. Prime age. Height. 14 feet 7. Devil fruit. Death death fruit special paramesha. Fruit rating. Ultimate class fruit. Fruit mastery. Awakened. Skills. Incredible talents in hockey. Extreme mastery over all movement arts. Great mastery over a supreme grade sword, Mokushiroku, overwhelming presence, shadow of despair. Hockey. Grand Mastery 3 of Observation, Mastered Advanced Armament, Grand Mastery IV, Fort C. Strength. Well beyond Yonko. Dash. According to Sybil, his observation has halted at the third stage and will no longer improve. He fully mastered Ryu Hockey to the peak. And from what I've been told, Grand Mastery 3 over anything is the maximum most people can reach out of the five stages before hitting their prime. Yet Zebek had gone beyond that limit in terms of Conqueror's hockey. Another thing I noticed, the weather above was wrapping around in black clouds as lightning rained down with pouring hail. Tornadoes formed behind us but not upon us. I guess having six advanced Conquerors in one region will do such a thing. As for the destination, I highly doubt it will survive. My birds have already confirmed practically every major and minor crew on the New World is racing towards Superbia with the Marines with their own schemes. Some powerful firepower has been relocated to this event as it will surely be endless chaos. No matter what, this festival will number the days of the Rocks Pirates as, that, fateful event is nearing by the days. Time till the Pirate Festival, 22 days. Chapter 100, Marineford, 2 weeks till the festival. Within the powerful walls of Marineford was an executive briefing room. The higher-ups would use this area to inform the Marines about certain missions or events. Pride D. Saul. The last remaining overlord of the sea. A vice admiral read out loud. He resides in the new world upon the island of Superbia. He went on to say, the prideful pirates, having been present in these seas for over two decades, number at around 30,000 pirates. Saul has his own top commanders, six of them, in fact. The commander of Envy, Jello. The commander of Greed, Fox D. O.S.C.A. The commander of Lust, Cupid. The commander of Sloth, Bourgeois Ignavi. 
the commander of gluttony, Gobbler, the commander of wrath, Thymos. The vice admiral then sighed out loud, each has made a name for themselves as they rampaged through the seas, amassing large bounties upon their heads. Step, Sengoku then walked in with his flair as the marines saluted in reverence. Speaking of bounties, the balance of berries has shifted from the recent emergence of the rocks pirates. But before such times, the three overlords ruled with great power. Slam, asterisk, he slapped a bounty poster upon the wall. Thaddeus, Medulla, Enigma, bounty of 3,412,900,000 berries. Slam, asterisk, crazed wind, Esso Borealis, bounty of 3,758,300,000 berries. These two are dead, leaving behind this problem. Sengoku then slaps upon another poster. Slam, asterisk, pride d, Saul, also known as, the sin of pride, and the, holy terror. Bounty of 3,909,285,000 berries. The figures reeled in the eyes of the newer marines as the older ones just nod solemnly. The admiral sighed, these numbers were quite crazy on our end but from the event that is about to happen in two weeks, all hell will break loose. Gulp, the men take a deep breath from the tension. The prideful pirates, the rocks pirates, the roger pirates. He said, these three are the true enemies of the world as each one of them can. Cause great mayhem, rocks pirates being the top of the list. He then shook his head in frustration, they have many of the pirates from the threat index of both first and second levels. From Zebek to Shaki to Whitebeard to the evil spirit and the new rising problem, sin incarnate. Damien, sigh, the admiral let out a deep breath as he peered at the tens. Of rear admiral and vice admirals present, this will be our greatest operation, we will obliterate the strongest pirates in one feld. Swoop, ow, dash, the new world, Superbia is located in this sea in Enigma, it is a single large island with two sister islands by its side. Upon the main island sit three major structures, two large forts to hold back the large plains and a city that houses nearly 300,000 citizens. It is widely known that the sin of pride lives in the Helios capital which is surrounded by three rings of walls. The sister islands are Apollo Island and Glint Island. The pirate festival is to be hosted in the latter. Superbia, the new world. Two weeks later, third pav. The sun had just risen as a mellow dawn lit up the island. It was 7.30 in the morning. Hum, Thymos, how is everything? A powerful voice beckoned the halls of the Golden Pride Castle. Thymos who was donning a cloak and hood simply looked up to the throne, yes, Saul Sama, everything is ready. The troops are prepared as well, the other five will ensure that no one makes a mess. So ha ho ho, good, I suppose it is time for me to grace them with my presence. Dash, Glint Island, Glint Island was only a fraction of Superbia's size but it was large nonetheless. It was nearly 20 kilometers wide with ports surrounding its shores. A grand atmosphere was present. The streets were filled with pirates, bold tourists, bounty tourists and hidden operatives. With Souls pirates keeping the peace and holding up the jovial mood, practically no crimes were occurring. A man suddenly called out, look there. The eyes darted to the side. I it's the baby pirates. And there, the noble pirates. The sky pirates are here as well. Isn't that the captain of the abyss pirates there? Many smaller groups were making their way to the center of the island as they anchored their ships at the shores. They were the ones who didn't have the guts to go against the current powers but refused to join them as well, an unruly bunch. Glint Island was a large open plain with a single elevated area. It was a man-made structure, a simple flat mountain that could view the remaining island from above. It was around 150 meters high. Upon this flat hill were Cupid, Jello and Ignavi of six vices. Yurufufufu, Saul Sama will be pleased, Cupid said as she smiled. Hum, don't be too ignorant. The Roger Pirates and the Rocks Pirates will arrive soon based on our intelligence, Ignavi said in a solemn yet sleepy tone. Jalalalo, Navi Kun, don't get your panties in a mix. Boss Saul will burn down all our opponents with his divine powers. Jello laughed. Two hours later, it was now 9.30 am and many of the pirates had arrived. Excluding Saul's crew of 16,000 deployed at Glint Island, another 12,000 have gathered around. There were many large tents and booths set up everywhere with large banners decorating the area. Mant flags and bounty posters flying around. The men waited for Sol's arrival. Some gambled some partied, some drank. Yet every single one was ready to engage once the fight breaks out. A gathering of tens of crews and a fight will definitely break out. Are you all ready? A large voice boomed off the speaker erected beside the raised platforms. Look, 
It's OSCA Sama. The prideful pirates roared out in joy. The 32nd Pirate Festival hosted by the Great Sol Sama will commence in 30 minutes. O U U U G H. Dash. The South Port. Wahahaha. This is what I call a party. A boisterous voice resounded the South Port of Glint Island. They surely seem quite excited, Rayleigh commented from afar. The Oro Jackson carrying the Roger Pirates has arrived. Let's go, Rayleigh. Gabon. Roger laughed as he jumped from the ship and onto the land with little care. A wide grin plastered on his face. Three kilometers away from Glint Island. If one were to look this far, they would see a rather scary sight. Nearly eighty pirates' ships gently floating about. In the center of this fleet was a gigantic ship that eclipsed all others. The Titanic of the Rocks Pirates. Dash. On the west edge of the Titanic stood two people. Damien's crimson eyes squinted into the horizon as he felt the ripples in the air with the sheer excitement of the thousands of rocks pirates nearby. His observation was in effect as he could see exactly what was going on three kilometers away. An eerie wind blew around, one could tell this day would be one that will go down in history. Pride D. Saul. Damien thought out loud. He has been around for over four decades yet they say he maintains the appearance of a man barely in his early thirties. Shaki, who was leaning on the railing smiled. Over three years ago, when we entered the new world, I told you he was the one I had little to no information of as most were simply afraid to share the tales. Damien nodded, the, holy terror, his name inspires fear from a religious and spiritual point of view. You told me his fruit tied into an ancient figure that existed a long, long time ago. Shaki puffed out a cloud of smoke as Damien went on to say, a mythical zone that can, rival the might of Zebek. I only recently understood what you meant, Rahaha. He has quite the power. The woman sulked rather teasingly, ah, with your network of news. I wonder why I'm needed. Damien rolled his eyes as he switched the subject, you know when this fest comes to an end, all hell will break loose. Shaki narrowed her eyes in seriousness, right, I won't be staying much longer. The crew will only grow more chaotic without my surveillance. She looked at Damien with slight worry, you must be careful, I have already silenced hundreds of spies and undercover agents, I'm afraid it will get far far worse. A little while later, within this ship were the four titans and the three of the four tragedies as their captain stood before them. XAHAHA. Set sail. Zebek gave the order for only the Titanic to sail as the other 80 plus ships simply floated in patience. Vwoo. Splash. Asterisk. The ginormous ship began its path, barely moving 70 kilometers per hour towards Glint Island. Newgate. Speed up the ship. Zebek yelled out. Whitebeard went to the back of the ship. Grab. He grabbed the air with his free hand while the other held. His weapon. The hand swiped up hard as the ground many kilometers below the sea started to shift from Whitebeard's powers. F W O O O O. The sea started to rumble as a giant tide of water was sent out from the earthquake below as the Titanic rode the mini tsunami to its destination. Half an hour later, the pirates had gathered. 12,000 pirates added to Souls pirates would mean that almost 30,000 of the toughest criminals had come together. Thud thud thud, a few shadows landed upon the raised platform. The six capital vices of the prideful pirates had come. Lady Cupid is so beautiful. OSCA Sama. Ignavi Sama is so flamboyant. Samanli. Lord Gobbler. Jello Sama. Look, Thymo Sama, the leader of the six capital vices. The prideful pirates were cheering with great energy as the land erupted into joy. As for the other pirates, most were too afraid to speak up as these six had a combined bounty sum of nearly four billion berries hey what's that ah uh, my eyes too bright all of a sudden the bright sun that lit up the island seemed quite dull as another glow illuminated the lands from the platform the crackling of a flame echoed through the now quiet land as a wave of blazing heat burst out from beside the six capital vices step step a few steps reverberated the island as a man now stood as if he were the center of the world he stood at around nine feet in height and had long white hair that ran down to his chest Glorious red robes encrusted with the finest of gems. The man looked quite young. VZZZFWVVVVV asterisk. Every few seconds, extremely hot waves of heat would pulse out of the man as they seemed to carry a suppressive effect, causing most to lose any thoughts of fighting him. He was the last remaining overlord, Pride D. Saul. The clouds were heated into oblivion as the vapor steamed from the air itself. So ha ho ho. Behold, my glory. A melodious voice with great amounts of arrogance boomed all over as the pulsing heat continued to boom out. 
The younger and weaker pirates fell to the ground panting as the heat hit them with all of its might while the stronger ones had to retreat a few steps as they felt shortness of breath and mental suppression. Only the true, veteran pirates could even look up at the overlord with tense faces. This heat is coated in the conqueror's hockey. Roger, who was drinking by the corner, thought as he saw the display and thought to himself. Alas, the hockey calmed down as the heat slowly returned to its master. Hem. I see most of you are curious as to why this fest is taking place, well, let me enlighten you. Saul said, it's simple, you pitiful fools. The overlord Saul laughed slowly. I, the sin of pride and the holy terror hereby declare myself king of the new world. And this festival shall be held in my name, he said with great pride. Pulses of the supreme will rippled out once more following the bold declaration. Boom, you all have a choice now. Either submit to Saul Sama here and now, or face our collective wrath. The six capital vices exploded with their powers as Thymos smashed the foot of his staff upon the ground to cement the thought. With the coercion of these six monsters and nearly 16,000 pirates, most were inclined to agree. The ultimatum had been given as the dawn of pride had begun. With the new world's greatest pirates in his hands, Saul could begin his crusade to supremacy. Other than that, pride d. Saul was called the Holy Terror. They say he is deeply associated with a past legend and many around the greatly fearful of this man's power. Praise the sun, a mix of deep fear added with the greed of grasping the treasures of the world caused most to surrender. Saul gave out a small smile as he viewed the others with great arrogance. However, there are always a fearful few, those who would die than to lower themselves before someone else. And those who overestimate themselves into thinking they can take down a new world top powerhouse with simple persistence. H.A. Submit, re he he, I came to the new world just a few years ago, I wanted to kill you in a little while but I'll take your head now. A smirking pirate with a yellow hat yelled out, his bounty is mine, another young pirate laughed as his metal fist smashed onto the ground. A third one smiled as his longsword rested upon his shoulder, remember the plan, you too. Our alliance only lasts till Saul is dead, it was three young men and their crews. Their rebelliousness sent shivers of greed in the masses as the undecided wanted to try and fight. After all, Saul was known to hold a plethora of treasure in his divine vault at Apollo Island. Saul chuckled to himself as he saw, around the rowdy bunch, Vush, asterisk, a vanishing sound boomed as the overlord disappeared from the platform, leaving nothing but a burst of dust. Vzzzz asterisk, he suddenly landed in the center of the three fools and their crews. Saul grinned, you are those, supernovas, of this, rising generation. So ho ho ho, I will use you as an example. Supernova, a title given to the star pirates that had flourished in the first half of the Grand Line, Paradise. They were unruly, the ones that could not be ruled and eyed the quest to conquer the entirety of the Grand Line. The super rookies took on their fighting stance yet something beyond their scopes occurred. Solar burst, crackling flames. The sounds of flames started to erupt as Sol's body glowed a vibrant gold as unimaginable levels of heat burst out alongside it. Boom. It was an inferno of spectacular delights as the golden fire exploded out of the relaxed overlord, raging and obliterating all matter around it. A-U-G-H-H-H. The pirates collectively cried out as the flames were impossible for them to withstand. Ah, unfinished calls for help rang out as the two hundred or so men nearby felt their skin burn away. Their flesh liquidated as the bones melted. Their very cells were utterly disintegrated from the flames. Soul's attack only went off for two seconds yet all the lands near him were charred black as most matter had evaporated away. The clouds above turned crimson due to the blood. The three pirate captains were on their knees. Their clothes burnt, skin peeling, reduced to the very outlines of their muscles as the bloody pink body remained. Raspy breathes went off as the three somehow still stood. Saul smiled, I applaud your tenacity, but no mere man can stand in my presence. With that said, a golden wave of fire shot out of the overlord hand as three pirate crews equaling over three billion berries in bounty were vanquished in a matter of mere seconds. Alas, the cry for defiance had already seeped into the hearts of a few other groups as they banded together. Thud x6. Six short rumblings went off as Sol's commanders landed beside him. Sol Sama, let us remove these unruly bunch, Thymo said as he gazed at around 3,800 pirates. In other words, 4,000 chose to fight while the other 8,000 surrendered. You who now serve the Holy Terror. Fight. O-U-G-H-H-H. 8,000 of the recruits added to the 16,000 prideful pirates yelled out as they ran forth with great fervor, eager to please the overlord. Alas, the war for the new world had begun. 
Though some truly powerful pirates were ready to take Saul down for good and grab the mantle of king and rule the seas themselves. Dash. Chapter 100 was not available on other sites so I have to write the chapter to copy the chapter. So please, like and subscribe for the hard work I did for you guys.